Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's playoff action between the Van Alstein Panthers and the Wills Point Tigers. We come to you from Kimbrough Stadium here in Murphy, Texas. For the second straight year, the Panthers will do battle at this stadium for a bi-district championship. We're about four minutes away or four and a half minutes away from game time and uh, a great night of playoff football ahead of us. Beautiful weather. Right now, currently in Plano, it's right under 60 degrees at 59. Wind is barely moving, so we've got an excellent night and excellent conditions for playoff football. Uh, and <clears throat> coming to you on a different platform tonight, same, same platform, I guess, but different uh, address. We're at the school's website, so welcome aboard, and hopefully uh, we'll have everybody joining us once they realize we're not on the regular uh, site. But, Chris, welcome to the booth. Hey, hey. Alongside me, as always, we're here to watch a great game between the Tigers and the Panthers. And both teams are on the field and ready to go. We've got the captains lining up for both teams. And we will be starting momentarily. We've got the captains lined up for the Panthers. We've got Weston Johnston for the Panthers that will be out there per usual. Also, Zach Thomas, Brady Carson, and I believe that's actually only the three that they're rolling out with tonight. So while they're doing that, Chris, why don't you uh, go ahead and tell us what you're looking forward to as a part of this uh, in regards to this game, how you think it will shake out both offensively and defensively, it seems. Well, I think, you know, coming into tonight, I think this is a Panther team that's – we talked about it week after week. This is a Panther team that's much improved, and as the season's been rolling, they've been better and better every week. Um and this is a Wills Point team that is coming on. Hey, two years ago, they didn't win a ball game. Last year, they were 1-9. and nine. And so this is a, a team that's young, that's hungry, that hadn't been in the playoffs in quite a while. So Van Alstein, I believe if Van Alstein just sticks to their fundamentals, plays their game like we know that the Panthers can, they'll have no problem walking out of here with a win. Yeah, you mentioned Wills Point and their recent uh, just absolutely <laughs> – atrocious records the last few years one and nine last year in the uh, first year under coach James Boxley and then the year years before that in 2021 as you mentioned they lost 10 games they went 0 and 10 and the year before that were one and seven so before this year where coach James Boxley turned around they're five and five finished three and two in their district and finished in third place and so the third place team from division 4a two will be playing the Van Alstein Panthers tonight who finished second in their division I didn't catch who won the uh, – I was too busy talking. didn't catch who won the toss. But we will let you know as soon as the national anthem is played by the Van Alstine Panther Band, you should be able to hear it on the broadcast tonight. Again, that was done by the Van Alstine Panther Band, and we are ready to go here in Murphy, Texas, where 
the start of the playoff journey begins tonight. The winner of this game tonight will go on to play the defending state champion Carthage Bulldogs next week. Mm. A team that the Van Alstine Panthers in this booth is very familiar with. <laughs> Both teams getting last-minute preparation before they take the field. It looks like the Van Alstine Panthers will be kicking out of the north end zone. As both teams are now on the field, ready to go here in Murphy. Thanks so much for joining us tonight for this playoff action. We do have the crowd noise pumped in tonight. We are in a, in a closed booth, so it might sound a little bit weird, but... Hopefully you can hear the crowd noise and it gives you a little bit of uh, a vibe of how the stadium is going tonight. Janik has the ball on the tee and the Panthers are ready to go. As they line up to kick. Aiden Cox back deep for the Tigers. And it'll be fair caught at the 10. Oh, and he drops it. Still trying to figure, to find the ball. And he will Ooh. finally recover, and the That's rough. Tigers will start their first drive. At around the seven, yeah, you know, that's the problem. If you call a fair catch, you know, that's inside right. the 10-yard line, they'll move it out to the 25. That's right. If you drop a fair catch, it the ball wherever you recover that ball, that's where it's down. So they're going to start at their own seven. So the Panthers' defense is looking right now to come out and set a, set a big tone early on this first drive. Panthers defense led by Jonah Price and Weston Landeros. Wills Point sends a man in motion. Comes out with three receivers set. 13 in motion, goes from left to right and there'll be a quarterback take all the way. Goes around the right side, has a hole. He has enough for a first down and more. Still on his feet, he's at the 35, 40. Crosses midfield, one man to beat and he will. The first play of the game goes 93 yards for Wills Point. And just like that, Wills Point is up six to nothing here in Murphy. And sorry for the technical difficulties as we are having some issues here in the booth. It looks like we finally got it going, but 93 yards by number 12, Jet Fletcher, the junior quarterback, takes it the distance, and the Panthers are in an early hole here, six to nothing with the extra point coming up. And, you know, that's a play that the Panthers are pretty familiar with. It's similar to the, their style of play. It's a – they're going to miss that. Yeah, the extra point is wide left, and so it'll be 6 to nothing. One play, 93 yards, and the Panthers are behind the gun already. And we'll see how this Panther offense responds. But that's a play, Justin, that the Panthers are usually pretty good at defending. It just – maybe it caught them a little off – Caught him by surprise as the first play of the game as it goes 93 yards. That is something that well, Jeff, just you cannot do in the first round of the playoffs on the first play. Well, Jet Fletcher only has – oh, excuse me. I was about to say only has. He has 1,000 yards <laughs> rushing on the season. <laughs> only, so Only 1,000, Justin. He's got 1,000 yards What's rushing wrong? on – Couldn't do more? 1,000 <laughs> yards rushing on the year. So it can't be too big of a surprise for this Panthers – uh, defense. They knew that he would be a factor in running the ball. In fact, pretty much the entire offense goes through him, really? obviously yep. the quarterback, but if he's both running for 1,000 and you know passing for almost 1,000 on the year, 922 yards on the season, you got to be ready for that run, and the Panthers were asleep at the wheel early. They're led by number 22, uh, Lorandon Dowden, as a running back. He's got over 1,100 yards on the ground as well. Back deep for the Panthers. Brady Carson. Kick is away. And this one will go to Braden Smith. Or I'm sorry, Braden Miller. And he will get tackled at the 25 yard line. And the Panthers, led by Weston Johnston, will take the field. So this Panthers offense is, as we know, led by Weston Johnson, who gets it done both in the air and on the ground, uh, very similar to Will's point. Every, you know, this offense runs through Weston Johnson, so how he goes is how this team will play. 
Weston Johnson, 1,600 yards in the air and over 520 on the ground for the season. Panthers come out for a five receiver set, empty backfield. And they'll send Carson in motion from right to left. Here's the snap, goes back to pass, rolls out to the right, looking for Fonseca. He'll get it at the 35. He makes the catch, and it'll be enough for a Panther first down. Mm. Nice play on first down there for the connection from Johnston to Fonseca, and the Panthers are going quick. Trips left for the Panthers. Michael Upchurch in the backfield is the running back. Here's the snap. He'll fake to him and go out to the outside to Brady Carson, makes a move, but unable to get away. He'll get about three or four on the catch and carry. Brady Carson coming into the game with nine, or sorry, 33 catches and 466 yards on the season. Adds to his total there, and the Panthers go again go into empty backfield. Trips right, five receiver set. Sends a man in motion, and it'll hit Carson again in the flats, and he's got some space. He's at the 45-40, and then knocked out of bounds right at the 39-yard line of Wills Point, and another Panther first down, and they move into Wills Point territory. Yeah, Brady Carson does a good job finding that lane to get through and then getting up that sideline for the yards after catch. Picks up the first down for the Panthers. Trips right for the Panthers. They'll send Miller in motion from right to left. Uh, Upchurch is in the backfield. Here's the snap. It'll be a handoff to Upchurch around the right side. Gets a minimal gain of about two. It'll be second down and eight for the Panthers. Panthers offense looking good so far. Trying to respond to the quick touchdown by Wills Point. Three receiver set. Two backs in the backfield are Upchurch and Carson. Here's the snap. It'll be a quarterback take all the way. Johnston hits a hole, gets about three or four before he's brought down, and so this will be the game's first third down for the Panthers. It'll be third down and about five. And I'm thinking you're in four down territory here. I know it's early in the game, but you're right in that area where, you know, it's too short to punt, too long to kick a field goal. So I'd say this is pick up a minimal gain here and just try to power it forward for the fourth, but don't try to, you don't have to pick it all up in one shot. And they'll go Wildcat as ah, Carson and the jump. Panthers jumped as the shift to the Wildcat confused the Panthers a bit and Upchurch got a quick start and that'll be a five yard penalty and so this will bring it back down to a third down and ten now after the game's first penalty. Unfortunately by the Panthers and so the Panthers will come out with a three-receiver set and the same backs in the backfield, Upchurch and Carson. Johnston will now switch back, and it'll be Carson the Wildcat, and he'll take it, looking for a hole. Had one momentarily, but it was closed quickly. Got about two or three before it was closed up. And so now this is going to bring up the first game, uh, the game of the, the first, <laughs> the game's first fourth down. It'll be fourth down and eight, and the Panthers are going to stay on the field. Coming yeah, you would, have, you would have liked to have picked up a few more yards on that last run play to kind of put them in a better manageable fourth down instead of this fourth and long that they're facing here. Empty backfield, four receivers to the right. Here's the snap. Johnson goes back to pass. Going over the top, and he had Braden Miller, but Braden Miller could not haul it in. Hit him in the hands, but it was just behind him. Is that Luke Juarez? No, it, that's that's yeah, Miller. It's Braden, Braden Miller. Miller, yeah. So Braden Miller had it in his hands, but it went just through him. And so now the Panthers will turn it over on downs, and Wills Point will take over at their own 40 or 36-yard line. Mm, and that's a rough one because, like you said, Braden Miller was streaking across the middle, and he had two or three steps. And usually a sure-handed receiver is Miller. Yeah, it's a uncharacteristic drop for Braden Miller, who is you know just a sophomore but is is a is an up-and-coming star. He's gotten better as the season's gone on. Is become that over-the-top threat that can open this offense up. Unfortunately, there it was just fell incomplete. Here's the snap. Fletcher is going to take it again. Another big hole here. He's got close to another. Will's point first down. He's going to be just a yard shy after the gain of nine yards by the quarterback. Junior quarterback Jet Fletcher has been the heart and soul of this Will's point Tiger team and showing the Panthers exactly what they thought they would see coming into this playoff game. Fletcher in the shotgun takes the snap. Well, now he will hold off and look to the sideline for an audible. Got second and one coming up. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to number 22. He was hit initially, and he breaks the tackle and gets all the way down to the Panthers' 40-yard line. That was 
Lorandon Dowden, the senior, 1,000-yard rusher for the Tigers, adds to his total there and gets another Wills Point first down. So, Justin, three plays. Wills Point is 113 yards on the ground so far. Not a bad start for this Tigers team. Come out in a four-receiver set this time. Dowden switches from the left side to the right side of Fletcher. Fletcher takes the snap, goes back to pass, and he's hit as he caught it. But he does make the catch after a minimal gain of about three. And that is number 13, Bryce McDaniel on the catch. Second down and seven. Trips left this time. A solo receiver out to the right. Knox Wilson will be covering him. Fletcher takes a snap. It'll be another handoff. This time the Panthers are ready for it, and he gets a minimal gain of about two, and this is going to bring up the first third down of the game for the Wills Point Tigers. So that was Jonah Price there on the tackle for the Panthers. It's With this run game and how it's going, I mentioned earlier that 113 yards – Around 115 yards so far in the first quarter. They've got to get Jonah Price. has got to get more involved there at that defensive end, defensive line position. They've got to control that line of scrimmage and start beating these linemen back. Dowden, the sole receiver or sole running back in the backfield with Fletcher. Since Bowden in motion and it's going to be a quarterback take. Oh, boy. And the Panthers were ready for that one as Fletcher just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. This is going to bring up fourth down for the Tigers. It'll be fourth down and four. Yeah, I think Tiger fans are looking for a call on that one, but it seemed like a pretty clean from tackle. Here, from you know, here it, it looked, looked like a face mask almost, but I'm glad it wasn't. Yeah, he just tackled him pretty high on the shoulder pads, which completely illegal. Just looked overly aggressive. Overly aggressive. Six minutes left to go in the first quarter. Panthers down six to nothing here in Murphy, Texas. Jed Fletcher on fourth down. We'll see what the Tigers do as they send Bowden in motion. Here's the snap. He goes back to pass. Goes over the top. He has a receiver. No, I don't think Did he make that. the catch? No, they're going to call The receiver looks like it hit the ground, and the Panthers force a turnover on downs. Oh, that's not a good image either. Number 22, Michael Upchurch, the Panthers running back. A little slow to get, get up, hobbling off the field. Well, the Panthers were very fortunate on that play as they had a receiver wide open up the, up the seam. It was just an underthrow by Jet Fletcher. Well, very similar turn of events that the Panthers just had on their side of the field on their offense on the fourth and long. They had everything where they wanted it. It was just a a drop pass, and same thing here for the Tigers as they turn it over on downs on the same situation. They had everything that they wanted, had the open receiver, just couldn't connect on it. Almost in the exact spot that they turned over on downs, 35-yard line for the Panthers, their own 35-yard line, as they'll send out Carson trips right. And we have a first whistle of the game. And we're going to have a discussion here with the refs. And number 23 for the Panthers. I don't have him in my on my roster here. Do you, Chris? I do not. I'm not really so sure who the running back is. Looks like a, a playoff add-in. I wish we could get a name. I'll try to find a name for you shortly. So our roster is not updated to the... Last minute, it looks like. There is no 23 on our roster. Maybe he added from the Jackson in the flat. He meets at the 40 and gets out of bounds at the 42. Nice gain on first down of about seven. It'll be first or second and three after the catch and carry. And the Panthers going quick again. Trips right. Here's the snap. It'll be... Quarterback take around the left side. Big hole for Weston Johnson. He crosses midfield, and he'll go out of bounds at the 46. Panthers get another first down, and they move into Wills Point territory. 5.35 left to go in the first quarter. Panthers haven't had an issue moving the ball so far. Their last drive stalled out due to a, a false start. Set up that long fourth down, but yeah, you're right. They haven't had any issues running the ball and moving the ball there. It looks like there was a fumble, Justin. A fumble by the running back. The new running back that came in fumbled it, and the Panthers are going to turn it over again. Their second one of the game early on, and Wills Point will take over near midfield right at the 46-yard line. And so the Panthers getting probably the worst start that they could have imagined. 
and lucky to only be down six right now. Looks like that might have been Upchurch. She was in there. Yeah, it was Upchurch. Uh, and I'm not sure. I don't know if that was a if it was a, a fumbled exchange. It was all uh, right there in the belly of you know. I don't. He didn't break through the the line. So whatever happened, I, I think it probably happened on the exchange. But you just can't put the ball on the ground right at the 50 yard line. You got you got to protect that ball. It's when you get to these playoffs, all these teams are talented and they can make you pay. We'll see if this Panthers defense can answer the call here at midfield. Fletcher has a receiver in motion from right to left and there'll be a handoff to Dowden right up the middle and gets another good four or five yards before he's brought down. And there's a late flag in Justin too. Coming from the, uh, the referee. Looks like it's going to be a personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask on the oh. Panthers, so tack on another 15 yards. This will give another first down to the Wills Point Tigers. I'm not sure who it was on. I know that Weston Landeros was in on the tackle there. I don't know if he got a little... A little handsy. A little handsy. But this is a Panthers team that's just doing themselves no favors here. With 521 left in the first, they've turned it over twice now, one on the ground, one on downs, and they gave up a huge 93-yard run to start the game. Four receivers set. Here's the snap. It's going to be a quarterback take all the way. Fletcher has a big room. He's got enough for the first down and close to the red zone. As he are, he's at the Panther 23-yard line. Fletcher has been impressive so far. Panthers have not had an answer for him just yet. As Wills Point comes out in another four receiver set, trips left. Dowden is the back to the right of him. Here's the snap. He'll pass it to Dowden out of the backfield. He'll make the catch, but the Panthers were ready for it there. Nice play there by Jonah Price coming out of the defensive line position. Yeah, that gets to the defensive a, end. That was a great play by Jonah Price. Nice hustle play. Made a little bit of a shoestring tackle there, but saved that play from... A big gain on the outside. Loss of one on the catch. It'll be second down and 11 on the 25, or excuse me, 24-yard line. Just over four minutes left to go in the opening quarter. Panthers down six to nothing. Wills Point is driving. Second and 12. Here's the snap. It'll be another quarterback take on the option or RPO, excuse me, and he gets maybe one yard. It'll be third down and 11 for the Tigers. So the Panthers seem like they've got this interior line shored up a little bit from earlier in the quarter. Fletcher, look to the sideline, Wills Point. Hailing out of Division 4, or excuse me, Division uh, District 6, as the game's first timeout will be called by the Wills Point Tigers. As I was mentioning, the Wills Point Tigers hailing out of District 6, 4A, in Division 2, a district that was won by Sunnyvale. And last week... Wills Point had to play Cattle Mills for the right to play a higher or lower seed. Wills Point did lose that game against Cattle Mills and finished third in the district. And as a result, they'll play the higher seeded Van Alstine Panthers. Panthers, the second place team out of their district. Important to mention that Van Austin coming off a bye week to end their district play, but did rally off three wins as this is a Wills Point team that, as Justin mentioned, did lose to Cattle Mills last week to end district play, which is why the Van Austin Panthers are facing them tonight. So Wills Point comes back on the field with third down and 11. Fletcher takes the snap. It'll be a handoff to Dowden trying to find the edge. Breaks a couple tackles, but just gets back to the original line of scrimmage. This will be fourth down and 10 now. So again, I don't think, <clears throat> I think this is, uh, well, 
I'd say this is four down territory for Wills Point as well. No, it looks like they're going to kick it. You send out the extra or the uh, field goal unit. It looks like it's going to be a heck of a kick. Interesting because this is a unit that has already missed an extra point tonight. So they roll them out here it's to attempt the 45 yard kick. Or 43 yard. 43 yarder here. Slight breeze. Yeah, the kick is away, and this is not, not going to be close. A lot of faith in that kicker. <laughs> And uh, so the Panthers' defense holds up. It's still 6-0 Wills Point here in Murphy. 2.32 left to go in the first quarter. Panthers down. Yeah, you mentioned that three straight wins to finish the, the regular season for the Panthers. Won 27-14 over Farmersville. Then went on the road and won 57-12 in a game that wasn't even that close. And then played against Gainesville, Gainesville at home to end the season on senior night, 38-14. So the Panthers are rolling, coming in. But... As we mentioned, they did have a bye week last week, and uh, they're certainly showing some rust. Trips right for the Panthers this time. Johnston has the snap. He'll take it himself, and he's hit right at the 25-yard line. He'll press forward to the 26 after a gain of about four. It'll be second and six. Weston Johnson lucky to get out of there, escape the pocket, even pick up three yards as they had that pretty well stuffed in the backfield. Bit on the fake, allowed Wesson Johnson to shimmy up for three or four yards. Here's the snap. Johnson goes back to pass. He'll step up in the pocket, and he had – oh, my goodness, was that – okay. Thought that might have bounced off the receiver's hands into the uh, linebacker's hands, but it wasn't incomplete. Weston Johnson made the throw with somebody draped all over him, uh, but it falls innocently to the ground. It'll be third down and seven. Panthers going quick again. Trips right. Solo receiver out to the left. Here's the snap. Johnston goes back to pass, rolls out to the right, hits his man over the middle, oh. and he dropped it. He was looking for Fonseca, hit him, but could not haul it in, and so the Panthers will be forced to punt again with 158 left to go in the first quarter. So it hadn't been necessarily a clean pocket, but Wesson Johnson did have time on that throw, delivers a great pass. It's just not able to get wrangled in there by Fonseca, who was about three or four yards past the marker, would have for sure picked up the first down. Again, this Panthers offense with errors on their part, open receivers just dropping the ball. It's It's got to be a little bit cleaner. They've got to clean it up as they go to punt here. Miller takes the high snap, and he'll do a directional kick to the right. Not a very good one. Nearly hits a couple Wills point players, but it goes out of bounds at the 49-yard line of the Tigers. And so the Tigers will have excellent position on this drive. Starting right at midfield. There's a lot of pressure in the backfield on that punt, too. Kind of hurried. Braden Miller forcing the uh, the low line drive kick that kind of teeters out of bounds at around the 50-yard line. Able to flip the field, but not by much, as Will's Point's going to start at their own 49. Will's Point's been very run heavy here in the first quarter as they have well over 125 yards on the ground. Four receivers set, two to each side, this time for Fletcher. Here's the snap. He goes back to pass, rolls out to the right, looking. Has a receiver, and he hits him right at the first down marker. He will have enough for the first. It's a gain of 11. And that was number 11 for the Tigers. Joseph Rowland. Joseph Rowland is good, correct. Does a really good job coming back for that as it's that's a timing route. Quarterback's going to pick a location, throw it to that location, let the receiver come back for it. Be able to get separation on the cornerback, come back and make the catch for the first down. Four receivers set again, two to each side. Dowden in the backfield with Fletcher. Here's the snap. It'll be a handoff to Dowden. Hits up the middle and then bounces out to the right. Gets about two yards before he's brought down by a host of Panthers. It'll be second down and eight. And I tell you, it's, it's, it's apparent now that the Panthers uh, just weren't Weren't ready for the physicality of the game as it started. You know, that bye week, it, it, it sets in and, you know, it, it keeps you fresh. Everybody has a chance to heal up, but you kind of lose the uh, the speed of the game, you, you, that, that first thump. Um, but it looks like the Panthers have settled down a little bit, especially defensively. They've kind of figured this offense out, uh, especially on the ground game. It's going to make them try to work through the air a little bit more. So now they'll come out. Trips left for the Tigers. 
Jet Fletcher, quarterback, takes a snap. It'll be a quarterback take yeah. around the left side. There was a big hole that opened up for him. He gets about five or six. It'll be third down and two after the gain of six. Boy, I say that, but I'll Benny the Jet Fletcher <laughs> rolling. He, he, hey, this is a quarterback that – the physicality, we haven't really seen a lot of. This Panthers defense really isn't used to playing these big physical running backs – or, excuse me, quarterbacks. Um, Will's Point runs a very similar style offense yeah, to what look, the Panthers run. Looks like they're looking in the mirror. And that will be the last play of the first quarter. Panthers down 6 to nothing. A little surprising from these two commentators' standpoint. We did not think that the Panthers would be down in this game. But the uh, Will's Point Tigers came to play, and you got to think that that bye week – from the regular season to the playoffs is really playing a pivotal role. The first play of the game, 93 yards. The Panthers were not ready. Uh, it was evident. And uh, But like you said, Chris, they settled down, and we, we've got a great ball game here. This has been an entertaining first quarter. Both teams have really moved the ball but haven't really finished except for that one lone play. Yeah, you're exactly right. That 93-yard touchdown to start the start the play from Wills Point's own seven-yard line uh, because of a – they started at their seven-yard line because of a botched – Fair catch on the opening kickoff, so they go the distance in one play. But again, they're well over 125 yards in the first quarter. Uh, this is a Panthers defense that's just not used to seeing this much adversity this early on, even against opponents kind of like e – even playing like opponents like Aubrey. Yep. Uh, just Aubrey, to, Pottsboro, those type of – Yeah, these running teams. It, it, this is – it's a lot of yards to give up in the first quarter, but – the score six is still to nothing. just six to nothing. So the Panthers have done a very good job responding and hanging in this thing. Trips right for the Tigers. They'll send their lone receiver to the left in motion, and they'll pitch him the ball as he was in motion. He gets enough for the first down. A nice run there by Joseph Rollin. And it'll be first and 10 from the 23 yard line of the Panthers. A really good job by Will's points outside receivers out there maintaining their blocks. Really opening things up for that little jet sweep that they run. So the Ran it to the short side of the field, but like I said, those receivers out there worked really well to maintain their blocks and open up the lane for the ball carrier. So three running backs in the backfield. This time it'll go to Dowden. He'll go over to the right side. He'll get to the Panther 20-yard line. It'll be second down and seven after the gain of three. Dowden, a talented running back. 165 rushes on the year for 100 or 1,112 yards on the season. 14 touchdowns. He's so. not a little guy either. I mean, he's a senior, but he's six foot tall. He looks to be about 225. He's a big ball carrier. Haven't seen a lot of speed, but I have seen some bruising runs so far. Here's the snap. It'll be a pitch to Dowden going around the left side. The Panthers are ready for it, and I think there's going to be a hold there as they get him. Behind the line of scrimmage, it'll be third down and 10, but there is a penalty on the play, and I believe that's going to be holding on the Tigers, and yeah. it will back them up 10 yards. Move this is back. a this is going to be a big hold, too, because it was in the backfield. Yeah, that's going to move them back, and that's been the story of both offenses tonight, just kind of shooting themselves in their foot, get down into the uh, – I mean, that one was – they're going to decline that, though, Justin. Okay, so third and 11. Lost some yardage on the run, and so Coach Michael Miller decided to decline it. Third and 11. Trips right for the Tigers. Panthers showing blitz. They'll show it off the right side. Fletcher looking to get the edge. He has some room. Gets to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. One man to beat. And there's a flag that comes in late. He did score, but we'll see what the call is. Looks like this one might go against Will's point. As the refs say there might have been a hold there by one of the receivers on the outside. And it is yeah, going to be another there. hold on the Will's point Tigers, and that's going to back them up even further. So a great play by Jet Fletcher is negated, and this Panthers defense dodged a bullet there, and it'll be Ooh. third down again coming up after the penalty. Penalty happened right around the 15-yard line. Yeah, that's a rough one to take. Because I believe he had the first down Yeah, he, right after it happened. So yep. that's that's a killer. So this one will, after the penalty, the ball actually advances a yard or two. And it'll be third down and nine now. Panthers defense 
trying to get off the field and get in the hands of Weston Johnston in this powerful Panthers offense. Here's the snap, goes back to pass. Looking for the fade route and just overthrown. Nice coverage there by the Panthers. Number 12, Caden Chandler on the coverage. And so now we'll see if the Tigers want to try that field goal unit again. <laughs> I, I can't imagine they do. Yeah, I don't think they're going to roll anybody out. That's their 0 for 2 in their kicking game right now. <clears throat> and I tell you, I, if, that's a little bit, it's, if that's a little bit more air under that throw, that looks like a touchdown. Yeah. I think there was just a little bit too much behind that. but Good coverage, though, by Chandler. Yeah, very good there. coverage by Chandler down there in the – Four receivers set this time on fourth down and nine. Jet Fletcher in the shotgun, takes the snap, goes back to pass. Picked off by Braden Miller at the 10. He's going around the right side. He's at the 30. One man to beat, and he won't beat him, but he gets down to the 40. The Panthers have the first turnover, other than on downs, I guess, so we'll call it. Nice play there by Braden Miller. Read the pass perfectly, played it almost like a receiver. And as a result, the Panthers... We'll have it first and 10 from the 40-yard line. So Braden Miller, that spark that the Panthers needed and were looking for, able to provide it there. You know, he uh, he had that drop pass there in the first quarter. I don't want to bring that up again, but seems like he made up for it there with that interception. And what a swing this is. That uh, took six points off the board, and the Panthers now have the ball at the 40, and this is going to be a handoff to Brady Carson around the left side. He gets down to about the 48 before he's brought down. Yeah, nice move there. Nice run by Carson. Gets close to the first down marker. Be about two short. And they're looking to Panthers hurry up. Going they quick. They'll send Brady Carson in motion out of the backfield, and they'll give it to Michael Upchurch. He gets enough for a Panther first down. Nice play, nice run there by Upchurch. Oh, actually, that's number 23 again, who we have not figured out who it is. <laughs> nice run there by 23, the new guy. New guy. Hey, new guy, come get these salamis stays, off my back. Stay. <laughs> a little heavyweight. A little heavyweight Stays in the game with Carson. This time it'll be a handoff to Carson going around the right side, Ooh. trying to find the edge. And he gets Ooh. nailed over there on the far sideline by number 11, Joseph Rollin, who's having a pretty good game for the Tigers today. Boy, I tell you, that's a fun hit. Yeah, I put, for Right on your sideline, number 11, just puts the stud on the offense on the ground right in front of your sideline. That's a and Brady Carson is usually the one delivering those hits. Well, I tell you, I didn't think Brady Carson was going to be able to get the corner there. He had to get into fifth gear to be able to get that corner. Just Second and ten for the Panthers. Here's the snap. It'll be a quarterback take Weston Johnson, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be another third down and long, third and 11 after a loss of one. So we'll see what this Panthers offense dials up here with nine minutes to go in the first half. Panthers down 6 nothing, Third and 11 at the 47-yard line. Carson goes in motion out of the backfield. Here's a snap. Johnston goes back to pass. And it's uh. picked off in the flat by number 24 for Wills Point. Not really sure who Weston Johnston was looking at as number 24, Reese Peterson, was just sitting in the flat in zone coverage. But a flag does come out late. Be interesting to see what's called here, Justin. If this is going to be defensive holding, yeah. we'll see what the call is. It's going to be a sideline infraction on the Wills Point Tigers. Well, that's why is the flag on this sideline? Not sure. It was thrown here on this near sideline. So unless this ref has just awesome <laughs> eyesight, I'm not really sure what he was looking at. I think maybe the sideline warning is on the Panthers. Maybe the Panthers. Line. He just <laughs> went he just the wrong direction. Down. Yeah. Yeah. So either way, the Tigers take over after the interception. Uh. And <clears throat> zone coverage just confused the Panthers there. And the Tigers have it right at midfield, first and 10. 8.45 left to go in the first half. Still 6 nothing. Will's point. 13 in motion from right to left. This will be a handoff to Dowden around the left side. Cuts it up the middle. And he's hit by number 22, Upchurch, coming up from the safety position to put the big hit, but not after a gain of six. It'll be second and four. There's just not enough penetration by this defensive line right now. At the point of attack, ball carriers are getting to the second level 
pretty easily before they're getting any contact. Three receivers set this time, two to the right. Fletcher takes a snap. It'll be another, no, it'll be quarterback take around the right side. There's a big oh. hole. He nearly Ooh. breaks the tackle, and it's a nice play there by Upchurch to shoestring tackle him right at the 32-yard line. Thankfully, he was there because if Upchurch doesn't make that play, that's a touchdown easily by a lot, Fletcher. A lot of real estate out there for Fletcher if he is able to get his knees up, but great job by Upchurch just hanging in there and getting his hand up there for the shoestring tackle. That's the second shoestring tackle we've seen tonight that's kept Will's point from getting in the end zone. First and 10 from the 30. Fletcher takes the snap. It'll be another handoff to Dowden. Dowden getting some hard yardage. Gets a five yard gain on the carry. It'll be second and five for Wills Point. And you mentioned it, Chris, the defensive line that's usually so aggressive and so uh, penetrating, just not getting through yet yeah, just in this game. They haven't really been themselves so far, haven't really been able to settle in. You know, I, I talked about earlier, it looked like they had settled down there and were able to figure this run game out, but it, here goes Will Point, Will's Point. They're right back at it, having a lot of success between the tackles. Second and five. Fletcher takes a snap. It'll be a handoff to Fletcher around the left side. He'll have enough for the first down, gets to the 19-yard line of the Panthers as they will move into the Panther red zone. 6.45 left to go in the first half, and Wills Point is driving again. Wills Point has been in this area a few times tonight, but been hurt by penalties and, and turnovers. Panthers' defense has stiffened up when they needed to. And that's been a story of the bend-don't-break defenses tonight, as made famous by Wade Phillips. Fletcher takes the snap, goes back to pass, looking for his outside receiver, and oh, great coverage by play. Knox Wilson out there. Just blanketed him. And the receiver had to go over the top to make the play. And nice play by that youngster. We've seen him make plays all year by the junior Knox Wilson. Been very impressed by his play out there. Or was that Caden Chandler? It looked like Caden Chandler. Yeah, Caden Chandler. I don't see Knox Wilson out there. And it's important to say Caden Chandler playing with a big mitt on his left hand as he's got his cast on. <laughs> Maybe that's why that ball bounced 30 feet in the air <laughs> when he knocked it down. Second and 10, here's the snap. It's going to be a reverse. And then throws Pass. back to the quarterback, and the Panthers read it the whole way. Nice play. And the Panthers Intercepted. come up with the interception. What an excellent play by the Panthers. Brady Carson was not fooled at all. Ran with the receiver, Joseph Rollin. Comes up with a big pick in the end zone. Then the Panthers' defense comes back again. Yeah, I'll tell you, Jet, Will's Point's quarterback, Jet Fletcher. I'm just going to call him Jet. I like it. He has no idea that Brady Carson's running with the receiver there. Wasn't fooled at all. No. Wasn't fooled at all. And they it was a re the reverse. Reverse, then pitch back to the quarterback. Yeah. So they, they, they had no expectation of that man being covered, and Brady Carson sniffs it out, reads it, and comes down with the big interception. Again, this is that bend-don't-break defense, both sides. So That's another Wills Point turnover. Panthers take over on their own 20-yard line. Trips right. Here's the snap. This is going to be a handoff up the middle. Nice run there by number – is it Upchurch or is it number – yeah, is that's Upchurch. Up nice run there by Upchurch, a five- or six-yard gain. It'll be second down and four. Six minutes left in the first half. Trips right again for the Panthers going quick. Johnson takes a snap, and he'll go back to pass this time. He'll hit his man over the right side. That's Braden Miller. Gets it at the first down and gets about three more yards. it will be another Panther first down at the 33-yard line. I don't think Braden Miller expected to be that open. It was <laughs> no one within Nobody six yards. Nobody around him. He was expecting to get hit right at, right at the point of contact of the ball. But Four receivers set this time for the Panthers. Here's the snap. Goes back to pass. He'll step up in the pocket. Does Johnson. He'll go over the middle. And that is knocked down by Rollin. Nice play there. Made it on uh, Castro Fonseca. Rollin has been all over the place tonight for the uh, Tigers. I'll tell you, he really has been. But, again, that's a great job by Wesson Johnson, keeping the play alive, moving his feet, and finding an open man is just, again, just aren't able to connect. Those are plays that you kind of wish you, you'd had back. 
Trips left for the Panthers. Here's the snap. It's going to be a run to Upchurch up the middle, and he's going to lose a yard. It looked like they had some trouble on the transfer from the quarterback to the running back, Upchurch, and it caused a delay in the timing, and Wills Point capitalized. It's going to be third down and 11. Hmm. Trips left again for the Panthers. Here's the snap. Johnston goes back to pass. Hits his man Carson in the flat, and he's hit immediately by three Tigers on this near sideline. Only a gain of three, and the Panthers will be forced to punt. Mm. It's the Panthers' offense that just struggling right now. It's just not able to get anything going. They're, even on the ground, they've been stalled on the ground. Usually that option that they run, it'll pop. It just hasn't popped tonight. It just looks real clunky. It does. Right now. And uh, like I say, it could be the rust here. It could be Will's Point just playing some good ball right now. Nice uh, directional kick. And it'll be down by the Panthers at the 31 yard line. And so Will's Point will take over. 445 left to go in the first half. Still a 6 to nothing game. Defensive battle so far here in Murphy. Been a good game so far. It has. It has. It's a beautiful stadium, too. You know, we were here last year for the uh, by-district championship. Same, uh, same stadium. Uh, so we're we're accustomed to the nice digs. Yeah, and of they uh, Stadium have a nice spread downstairs yeah. for us. Uh, just a nice sandwiches. Nice, nice place to go. Yeah, Love playoff football because you always get a, a get good, good spread. Meal. Yeah, yeah, good meal. It's always. nice. It's usually, uh, what do we get? Usually a taco casa. Yeah, we've had that. We've had Chicken Express. Tonight it looks like it's just sandwich trays, but. Really, ain't, really good. Ain't nothing wrong with a good sandwich, no. huh, Justin? Heck no. I've always said that. It has been always been your saying. It is. I do right? remember. <laughs> Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Dowden around the right side. Go. He gets about three or four before he's brought down. Tim Inman sticking his head in there, getting a nice tackle. Second down and six. And oh, they're going to say it's uh, there's a penalty on the play. And it's going to be... Oh, Offsides on the off Panthers. Sides. You know, they, they jumped. I thought they got back. I didn't see the flag get thrown until later, but must have made some contact there on the interior line as they step it off. Caden Benedict is number 23, by the way, Chris, if you want to write that down so Kaden we don't remember. Caden Benedict. And uh, thank you to whoever let us know on thank the you, chat. Justin Ramsey. Hey, Justin Ramsey, tell us a little bit about him as well because – did he come from the practice squad or the uh, JV squad or what? Here's the snap. This is going to be a handoff to number 22 this time. That is Rene Granados. And he has got a loss of about two on that carry. It'll be second down and six. They marked actually a, a yard off, so it'll be second down and seven with four minutes left to play here in the first half. Three receivers, two to the right, one to the left for Fletcher. Here's the snap. It'll be a quarterback take by Fletcher. Gain of about five. This is going to bring up third down and three. We'll see if the Panthers' defense can tighten up here. They've had trouble with these third and shorts tonight. Jet Fletcher has really run at will and converted on them. I tell you, he's, he's impressed me, you know. He didn't jump out a lot on film, but seeing him actually play, he's got some. Got some moxie. And we have another timeout called by Wills Point. Nice. Coach Boxley did not like what he saw. So this game is, you know, <laughs> it's primarily been played here between the 30s, I'd say. Both both offenses, no problem driving the ball down deep into enemy territory, but just haven't been able to do anything with it once they get there. Been a couple of turnovers. Van Austin's had uh, two interceptions. Stop the drive of Will's point. Just, just a, sorry. I'm just not able to get anything going offensively. It's kind of 
like you said earlier, it's just kind of congested there, just kind of uh, clunky. Is that what you said? Clunky? I did. Yeah. 257 left to go in the first half. Coming out of a tight end, a tight end timeout called by uh, Will's Point. That is their second. They have one left. Third and three for the Tigers. A number of times tonight. Oh, first and ten for the Tigers as we creep to the two minute mark of this first half of by district action. Here's the snap. This is going to be a handoff to number 22, Granados. And he gets a minimal gain of about one. It'll be second down and nine. Or excuse me, not Granados. That's, that's Dowden. Sorry, I thought that was 21. That's Dowden on the carry. I don't know what I was thinking. I see you looking. I don't even have that name on my roster. I, it's... I don't think he plays very often. I don't know why I thought that he was going to be running the ball. Clay on a five, on five, five receiver set. And it's going to be a handoff to Dowden, who is in motion. Nice, nice play, play there by Brady Carson coming up to make the big hit. And he's going to lose a yard. This is going to be second down and eight, and or yeah, second Panthers. down and nine. And Michael Miller will be calling a Panthers' first uh, timeout. It'll yeah. be third and nine coming up. Got third and nine here. Panthers looking to get this ball back. Preserving at least one timeout, getting the ball back with under a minute to play here. Panthers looking to get that extra possession in right before half. They're in a good position here as they can if they can get a stop, force the punt. And they're looking to start about their own 25 or 30, depending on the return. They'd be – it'd be awful if they kicked a Braden Carson <laughs> – Brady Carson – and let him try to get a return with a minute left. That'd be ideal for the Panthers. It would just get be some. It would just be awful. Inject some life into this offense. As yeah. we, uh, first time we've seen them shut out at halftime yeah, in a while. Trips right or trips left for the Tigers, and they'll go empty. Five receivers set. Dowden is the receiver closest to the line on the right side. Panthers showing blitz off the right, left side. Big hole over here to the left. He will get close to a first down. I don't think that he got enough for it. It'll be fourth down coming up for the Tigers, and we'll see if they go for it. And we have an injured Panther, and it looks like he is in a lot of pain down there hmm. right at the 50-yard line. Could not see who that was. Looks like one of the linemen, though. Be fourth and uh, fourth and two when play resumes. And this injury timeout gives the Tigers a little bit of a chance to figure out what they want to do with 136 left to go in the first half. Yeah, this is a big fourth down. Uh, if they fail to pick it up, they're giving the Panthers the ball at about midfield. And I know that this is a Panther team that has struggled at times tonight to move the ball. Well, all night, basically, the whole first half, they've struggled to move the ball, but It'd be a, it'd be an interesting turn of events if you uh, if you give the ball to the Panthers at the fifty and they're able to get some points here before halftime. You gotta, and that's number three by the way. That's Jackson Skinner who's uh, up and he's haven't gonna, heard much from him tonight. No, he's gonna, but he's one of the playmakers on this Panthers team. That's a hope he's all right. He's making his way off the uh, off the field under his own recognizance, but does look to be moving a little gingerly. As he's going to come and get looked at on the sidelines. The Panthers will call a second timeout here to discuss what they want to do. 136 left to go in the first half. Been an entertaining ball game so far, even if it is only a 6 nothing score. We've seen a lot of offense, just not a lot of scoring. A lot of defense. Pretty good defensive game we got here. Panthers again with two turnovers on the night. Uh, an interception by Braden Miller and a uh, touchdown-saving interception by Brady Carson. Panthers have turned the ball over once on the ground and once or twice now on downs. Uh, and they've punted the ball away again two more times. So this is an offense that just has struggled tonight getting anything going. 
And like you said, Justin, we're not accustomed to seeing a zero on the score. We'll see at this point will send their offense out, and it looks like they will. So Jet Fletcher has his troops ready. Four receivers set. Trips right. Solo receiver out to the left is Rollin. They'll shift into the Wildcat, and they'll punt it away. All right. Tricky Ooh. little play there and a decent punt. Great. Oh, and it'll take punt. an awesome Tiger bounce, man. Oh, you just can't punt. get it any better than that. That'll be all the way down to the Panthers' five-yard line. Boy. You know, I was thinking maybe they'll come out and do a little quick kick here. And, uh, yeah, they shift into that. But, boy, what a punt. That's going to leave the Panthers, give the Panthers their starting field, field position at their own five. That's the worst starting field position they've had tonight. And first and ten from the five with 125 left to go in the first half. So the Panthers looking to – Move the ball 95 yards here with a minute 25 left. They've still got one timeout on the board. As they're looking for a big chunk play here that can get them down the field in a hurry. Empty backfield for the Panthers. Here's the snap. It'll be a quarterback take up the middle all the way. It's Weston Johnston. Bowls his way over to the 15-yard line. He'll be a yard shy of the first. Oh, they're going to say he got it. Hmm. And it'll be enough for a Panther first down at the 15-yard line. Very important first. Going, yeah, it was a very important first down run. It also gives them move, uh, distance out of their own end zone to move. And Johnson taking it again over to the right side, and he'll get another seven yards this will, or six yards. This will be second down and four with a little over a minute left to play. The, the clock is still going. Empty backfield again for the Panthers. Here's the snap. Goes back to pass. Hits his man in the flat. That's up church. He gets enough for the first down and then pushed out of bounds. Mm. Clock will stop. Got it down to the 27-yard line. Under a minute to play now, 53 seconds. The clock will stop with the out-of-bounds hit. Four receivers this time. Trips left. Up church in the backfield behind Weston Johnston. Johnston takes a snap, and he'll look to pass. Hits Carson in the flat, tries to make a move, and he They're was keep it running. He was moving backwards, so the Panthers have got to get up here on the ball. Will they save the timeout? It looks like they will. It's at the 40-second mark. Panthers trying to move quick and get this snap off. And we're at 30 seconds. Johnston takes the snap, goes back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, goes out to the outside, has a man wide open in the flats. That was Braden Miller. He'll make the catch and step out of bounds after the first down. 26 seconds left to go in the first half. Panthers moving the ball. Panthers, They're at the 38-yard line. That's an excellent job of everybody getting back on the line of scrimmage and getting that playoff and actually having a successful play. I was looking for a clock stoppage, but here's the snap. Looking to pass. Johnston going deep. He has a man wide open. Braden Miller. He's got one man to beat. It's Rollin, and Rollin pushes him out of bounds with 16 seconds left to go in the first half. A 45-yard bomb from Weston Johnston to a wide-open Miller, and the Panthers are in business with 16 seconds left to go in the first half and a timeout left. And I tell you, they had two receivers down there to pick from, two receivers, one defender, so they had the numbers there. Great job by Weston Johnston finding Braden Carson, or excuse me, Braden Miller left wide open. And so the Wills Point Tigers will take a timeout, catch their breath here, and try to decide on how to defend these last few plays of the first half. Panthers looking to get on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. And they have moved the ball all the way down to the 15 on a drive that started at the 5 with 140 left in the first half. We now stand at 16 seconds and they're down to the 15-yard line. Yeah, Justin, you're looking at 16 seconds left. Got a first and 10. They're starting at the 15. And I'm just thinking about, you know, if you get down to where you got a kick, there's a slight breeze. It's blowing from the east to the west. It's not enough to where I think it would make an impact on the kick. I know we've seen two missed, kicked, missed, missed kicks already, excuse me, out of this north end zone. But I don't think the wind is what caused that. So the Panthers do have that option to kick if they do get low in, in time. This 80-yard drive will continue. Here's the snap. Johnson goes back to pass, rolls out to the right. Now he's going back to the other side. He's got Brady Miller wide open, had to wait on it, but he's got enough for the Panther touchdown. The Panthers score 
140 left to go in this uh, first half. They started this drive on the five-yard line. Nine seconds left in the first half. They get on the scoreboard for the first time. It's 6-6 six to six with the extra point coming up. The Panthers will send out the extra point team. And this Panthers offense figures out a way just before halftime. And boy, what an absolute demoralizing halftime score it would be for Wills Point to have to lead the entire first half and lose it with nine seconds left to go. Janik out to kick the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good, and the Panthers flag. have a lead momentarily. Flag we do have a flag. Probably going to be lining up over the center, if I were to guess. So that's going to be declined, and the kick is going to be good. But I tell you, Justin, going back to that pass, uh, it was great. The, the entire Panther offense had everybody moving you know, to the right side of the field, to the weak side of the field, and they had Braden Miller coming back across and it's just wide open. Wesson Johnson's able to find him, throw across his body across the field and able to get in for the touchdown. And you're right, that is so demoralizing to have the lead the entire first half and then to go down with nine seconds left to go down seven to six and taking it in. You've done everything right except for this last drive. You're just not able to get the stop that you need. But again, this is a Panthers team that needed a spark and they found it all on that drive with the long connection, the 45 yard basically bomb to Braden Miller, and then the drive cap by Braden Miller for the touchdown. Panthers up 7-6 to six with nine seconds left here at Kimbrough Stadium, Murphy, Texas. It's been a good ball game so it's far. Outstanding, Boy. just a really good defensive battle here, a lot of hard hitting. It's been clean football, not a lot of penalties, a few, but it's been a good hard-fought match. Well, we're in for an excellent second half. If this first half is any indication of what's to come, after the penalty, the Panthers will take the penalty on the kickoff, so they'll be kicking off from the Wills Point 45. This should be well in Janik's range to get a touchback. Thinking pooch kick. Oh, oh no. And there's oh, a flag on the Panthers. Goodness. As number 15 for the Panthers, Weston Landeros steps over the line. I guess he thought that they would be – doing well, an onside well, but now I tell you, right now coach miller's calling the actual the head the the official the head official and he's going to argue the call here and, and they're probably going to pick this flag up because i'm not really sure what happened I but don't, i don't they're waving her off i don't i think you can get back across the line of scrimmage as long as the ball's not kicked mm. you know what i'm saying yeah it makes sense I don't think that's right, but... No, I think that's right. <laughs> you want to fight? I'll fight you right here in this box. Janik goes back to kick. He will kick this into the end zone. And, and Will's Carter, point will allow it. And Carter, don't try to get involved. I'll fight you too. <laughs> okay. Glad I got that out of my system. So nine seconds left to go in the first half. We'll see if Will's point just downs this. And kind of a little update here. We started the game off, like we said, we didn't have the complete roster. We found I had to piece it together as we go, but we did find out who number 23 is. Is Caden Benedict, who is a freshman, moved here this year from out of the district, played for JV. Word on the street is he's a future star for Van Alstine. And we look forward to – Calling his name out more times, says possibly tonight. And don't quote me, quote Justin Ramsey. Thanks, Justin Ramsey. Appreciate it. As we'll see, Will's Point looks like they're just going to down it and head into the barn here. Down seven to six here at halftime. What a half! Good, nice play. Nice, nice play uh, by both teams, and uh, got a great game. Seven to six here at halftime at Kimbrough Stadium. A few scores to update you on. Some of our district mates not having as good a time as we are tonight as Caddo Mills is abusing Farmersville 28 to nothing in the uh, mm. second quarter. And uh, later on, Sunnyvale and Crumble play. Sunnyvale, an absolute excellent team. They actually held out of this district and won it. Where do they play? Uh, I don't know where they play. They're not playing right now? They're, it's upcoming. So apparently later on tonight? I don't know. Yeah, later on tonight. They're going to start the game at midnight? Uh, who knows? It's not up. It says upcoming, doesn't it? So, yeah. But, Chris, yeah. what are your thoughts so far in this game? And uh, then we'll turn it over to the, uh, the halftime festivities of Texas high school football. You know, it's, uh, it, was a, it was a defensive first half. Uh, Panthers had their opportunity. And uh, with some penalties and some turnovers, they just squandered it. But 
uh, I'd say it's pretty promising to see that last drive. They were able to get stuff moving in the air. We're able to find some open receivers, kind of pick apart a little bit of the secondary and make a run at it there with a minute 40 left. It's just pretty impressive. It's a good way to uh, – to end the half, and 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 I, I like I've said before, if if the Panthers can learn to well, not learn, but if the Panthers can hunker down at the line of scrimmage and 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 play their game at the point of attack, I think that they'll have no problem. But so far, the story of this first half has been that interior run game, which has just shredded this Panthers defense. Uncastamere, they hey, 125 yards in the first quarter, they end at about 150 uh, for the first half. So the Panthers were able to get some big stops in there, but you take away that 93-yard run to start the game, and you're looking at maybe 60 yards on the ground. Panthers' defense has definitely uh, kept this team in it. Um, you could have seen a scenario where Will's point was up 21 to nothing at one point. Yeah. Uh, so the Panthers' defense with a couple turnovers deep in their own territory and uh, a team that really has relied on their offense for most of the season has had to rely on that defense tonight, and it's nice to see that this Panthers' defense can rise to the occasion. Uh, that'll do it for the first half. Uh, oh. Panthers up 7-6. to six. Got a Griff Cervati sighting. All right. A Griff Cervati sighting, everyone. So uh, enjoy the high school festivities. The cheerleaders and bands will be out momentarily, and we will see you for second half action soon.
So we got five minutes left here at halftime and got a score of Van Alstine 7, Wills point six, a defensive struggle here in the first half. A lot of opportunities for both teams, but neither one of them could really capitalize on most of them. The Panthers finally did break the scoring drought and got on the board with nine seconds left in the first half to take the lead for the first time in the game. Uh, but still a long way to go here in this bi-district championship. I want to try something a little different here, Chris, oh. at halftime. <clears throat> Since we don't have sponsors for this game, it is a uh, this is a volunteer basis for us from the rest of the way here throughout the season, uh, according to UIL rules. And so um, in a time where we'd normally be talking about our sponsors, let's, let's give it up to the fans here in the chat if you have any questions you want to ask us about the team, <laughs> just There's, about life. I've tried to get people talking in the chat. They don't want to. Well, they don't like we'll, we'll open it up. We'll, uh, we'll just be talking here, and if one pops up, just ask away. We're an open book here for the next four minutes. If yeah. you have any questions, ask, and we'll give you an honest answer. But until then, Chris, let's talk about this second half coming up. You know, this could either be the start of a, a nice playoff run, Although next week will be a challenge against the defending state champion Carthage Bulldogs. Hey, Carthage has got to win their game tonight. Yeah, and well, they already did. They won last night, actually, forty-two to nothing. So, um, oh. it's yeah, they did. Uh, and so, um, one of these two teams Tough is playing one. them next next week. And so, what do the Panthers got to do to be that team that has a chance to take down the champ? Sorry, I missed that. That's okay. I was I'll the repeat. Chat. It. We had a question. In yep. chat. What's the What's the question? Is this channel affiliated with VISD in any way? It is, actually. It is the YouTube channel of Van Alstine High School. You'll see live stream VAHS as the title. It is the administrator, uh, Lisa. I don't want to say her last name because it's uh, it's private, obviously. But Lisa is the administrator for Van Alstine. She gave us the permission to use this channel. We know we're normally on the uh, YouTube channel Van Alstine Panther Football but tonight we are on the school's YouTube channel. So, so the, the, the reason for that is, is, is UIL, when it comes down to uh, the playoffs, they have a different set of rules for their broadcast and everything. So throughout the season, as long as you're um, you know, affiliated with the, with the school district or if they approve it, you can, you can broadcast the games with no problem. But once we get into the playoffs, it's a $500 uh, fee if you want to broadcast the game. Um, and you can only broadcast games that aren't being broadcast by UIL's official broadcast. So, unfortunately, probably next week, we will not probably be allowed to call the game. Because we'll keep Car you in the loop on we'll, that, though. We'll, yeah, we'll let you know as the week goes on. But because Carthage is the defending state champ and is such a powerhouse in 4A, um, they tend to get publicity that normal, you know, Van Austin normally wouldn't get. So, we'd be uh, kicked to the curb, so we, to say. We shall see, though. Um, some updates on the scores. I know we had uh, kind of had a little uh, tiff about whether Crumb was going to start their game at midnight or not. <laughs> Apparently they have started. It's at halftime. They just didn't update the score, and it's going about as much as as, I, as well as you'd think. I Sunnyvale's would, up 30 to nothing yeah, over I Crumb. Up, I wouldn't update that score either. Yep, 30, Crumb. 30 to nothing over Crumb uh, at halftime. And Farmersville and Cattle Mills. Cattle Mills is up 28 to 3 over our district uh, mates. So, so far for our district uh, not going really well, except for right here in Murphy, uh, where Van Alstine does have a halftime lead of seven to six. So, halftime has concluded. Uh, the Wills Point Tigers are out on the field, but we're still awaiting the Panthers to join, oh, and here, they, here they do now. Who is the join. best? Who is the best VA football? Who is the best VA football player so far? Is that? Like ever, ever or on this team or since we've been broadcasting, going to have to be a little specific. If we're talking about since I've started broadcasting, there's been a few. Um, I, I I really loved watching uh, Dakota Howard uh, play the last few years. Um, the, both the Montgomery brothers were really good uh, the last few years as well. Jaden Mahan comes to mind. He was a four-year starter so that I covered. It's ever. Ever. And I've got my personal. That's tough. I, 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 well, I, I think both of ours is the same, the same person. person. Yeah. Of course, I didn't get to watch him play. I just like him as a person. You say it on three. One, two, three. Seth, Seth Sitton. Sitton. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, Better homes and garden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Seth Sitton, who who went on. Seth Sitton had a had a. At an awesome career at Van Austin. <laughs> of course, they went to the uh, state semifinals back in 92. Uh, 
were then, beat by Pilot Point, but then he went on to have a, a career yeah. playing Division One football at SMU um, and took on a lot of honors there before he returned to Van Alstine as our athletic, or as a, excuse me, as our defensive coordinator before moving to Melissa to take on their head coach job. He's currently the athletic director, but he is by far the best football player I've ever seen out of Van Alstine. We're going to get back to the action here. Also brought brought a state championship to Melissa as well, their first ever state championship uh, back in 2006, I want to say, 2006 or seven, or maybe even eight. Either way, that is a, that's going to be a flag on uh, Will's point. Illegal procedure as the ball went out of bounds at about the 20-yard line, so the Panthers are going to get excellent field position to start the game, uh, the second half here. Um, Billy Medlock, greatest VA all time. <laughs> <laughs> was that Billy that threw that up there? Or? I don't know. Justin Ramsey threw it up there. Yeah, okay. Billy. Billy's pretty Billy good. was we, a good one. Played, I mean, you know, we Billy. laugh, but we played with him, we and we're only him. laughing because we know him. Yeah. But, uh, no, Billy was a heck of a football player. Yeah. He um, actually uh, he, would, he led the uh, – I think for a while he was the Van Alstine High School leader in interceptions. Yeah, and he probably, um, I would say, he probably averaged about two catches a game for 85 yards a game as well. <laughs> yeah, two for so. 85 every week and a touchdown. So trips right for the Panthers to start this second half. Weston Johnston takes the snap, goes back to pass on first down. He's looking to go deep. He's got Brady Carson. Makes the catch at the 37-yard line. Nice play, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 35. Excellent first play by the Panthers, and we were wondering when they were going to go over the top, and they did right there. Brady Carson beats number one, Lathan Pruitt, on the first play of the second half, and the Panthers are already into uh, Wills Point territory. Trips right again, Weston Johnston takes the snap, and it'll be a handoff to Upchurch. And he'll get about four. Nice little move there by Upchurch to. I don't think I say we got three on that one. It'll be second down and seven. Jordan Barnes. Jordan Barnes was very good. I think he was a uh, leading rusher in the state at one point. So we got a uh, empty backfield. Five receiver set. Here's a snap. It's going to be a quarterback take all the way. And boy, Weston Ooh. Johnson was hit right at the line or behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be the loss of what they gained on first down. It'll be third down and ten after Weston Johnson was hit right in the mouth. Yeah, just nowhere to go there. Again, this is uh, this battle at the uh, line of scrimmage has been something to watch all game long. And kind of figured that moving in. They have some big boys on their defensive line. We've got some big boys in our offensive line. So we knew this was going to be a struggle coming in, or not a struggle, but a battle. And it has been tonight as Weston Johnson's stuffed there on the uh, on the option. Panthers going empty again. Four receivers to the right. Here's the snap. Goes back to pass. And it's uh. picked off again. Looking for Brady Carson. He's got some real estate ahead of him. He's at the 40, 35, 30. He's got a man to beat. Upchurch comes from behind and fetches him at the 10-yard line as Weston Johnston was looking to go to Carson in the flats, and it was read beautifully by the linebacker, picks it off and takes it all the way down deep into Panthers territory and not the way that Weston Johnston no. wanted to start this second half. And I tell you, that's the second throw tonight that he's been a little confused on the coverage by the Tigers as it looks like they were sitting out in a man, and he just lost track, or excuse me, sitting out in a zone, and he just lost track of the uh, the outside linebacker there who's able to make a play on that ball and get a big return. Panthers are lucky that they were able to get down the field in a hurry and not give up on the play and make the tackle at the 10-yard line, but the Tigers are starting deep early. Excellent uh, effort play by Upchurch to save the, ta the touchdown as Fletcher sends his man in motion, and it'll be a quarterback take, a little confusion behind the line of scrimmage, and he just tries to get back to the line of scrimmage and he just barely does, and so it'll be second and goal from the nine. Good, uh, and good Panthers effort there injured by, uh, on the, another one. Panthers injured on the play. It looks like one of the defensive linemen is down. So that was Keegan Daly on the tackle there for the Panthers, but – Had a couple of injuries on this been Panthers a, defense. Been a physical unit. game so far, that's for sure. Has been. This Panthers defense oh. has answered the call when deep in their own territory tonight, and they'll have to do it again here. So it looks like it was just a cramp, going to get stretched out a little bit. Just <clears throat> You know, usually this late in the season, especially as it's getting cooler out and your conditioning goes up, cooler. I don't know why it sounded funny. Cooler. Cooler out. I don't know. Number Everybody. 21, Colton McCaslin was the Panther injured on the play. He will walk off. Yeah, luckily it was just a cramp, but what's wrong with the way I say cooler? I don't know. I don't know. It just sounded funny. The uh, Tigers come out, trips left this time. <laughs> 
Solo receiver out to the right. You know Dowden what? is the back in the backfield. Here's the snap for Fletcher. It'll be a quarterback take around the uh. right. He'll go right up the middle, and he will walk into the end zone as the Tigers have scored on their opening drive of the second half. And they retake the lead 12-7. We'll see if they'll send the extra point out or go for two to make it a seven-point ball game. Fletcher has both touchdowns for Wills Point tonight, one on a 97-yard run, or sorry, sorry, 93-yard run, and that one on a nine-yard gain. And they'll go for go two here. Two. Yeah, try to get that the Wildcat formation, and boy, he should have stayed going He's up the middle. I don't think he got it. Boy, he had the hole. Will he get in? Oh, he did oh, finally get in. Effort. The uh, refs would not call him down. I guess forward motion did not stop, and now a flag, flag comes, comes out, out late. This is probably going to be unsportsmanlike on one of these two teams. Usually the flag that comes out that late. Well, it, it's going to be after the score. So the, the touchdown is going to count. They're going to end up either marking this off on the extra point, excuse me, on the, uh, the kickoff. Because yes. it won't it won't affect the points. No, no. So uh, Will's point up fourteen to seven here. A drive or the second half started out so promising for the Panthers on a long bomb to Brady Carson for about fifty yards, and then two plays later, we're deep in Panthers territory after the interception, and it's all of a sudden fourteen to seven Will's point with ten minutes left to go in the third quarter. Yeah. So a couple of turnovers here for both teams. Uh, big interception. There is the difference in the game here as it's 14-7. to seven, As the nope. Tigers were able to start that drive at their own 10-yard line and had no issue punching it in for the, for the score. As we've talked about, this Panthers defense has been up for the task for the game. But, you know, it's hard to, hard to miss. The Wills Point Tigers defense has been up to the task as well, holding this Panthers offense. It's yep. so potent at bay for the most part tonight. Uh, he, they've confused Weston Johnson a couple of times tonight, which is something we haven't seen all season. Weston Johnson just usually so compo uh, so composed under pressure, but tonight had a little trouble. A lot of ball game left to play, though. 14-7, to 7, 10 minutes left to go in the third quarter. Been an entertaining game, that's for sure. It really has been. A lot of back and forth. Not a lot of scoring, but certainly a lot of back and forth. Good defensive effort here tonight. And Murphy... Tell you, this is a Wills Point team that has surprised me. Um, well, talking to the broadcast team at Wills Point at halftime, it surprised them as well. Yeah. <laughs> Did hear from them that number 22, Dowden, had transfer from Carthage in the offseason. Kick is away. This is going to be a line drive kick. Good boot here. It's going to go right to Braden Miller at the five-yard line. Line drive kick. He's at the 20. Looking for a hole, gets to about the 30-yard line before he's brought down, and the Panthers will start their second offensive drive of the second half. First and 10. Again, the winner of these this game will face Carthage next week. Obviously, the location to be determined. Last year, Van Alstine had the unfortunate undertaking of taking on the champs in Texarkana at Texas High. Panthers come out of trips left. Johnston takes the snap. This is going to be a pass to the flat to Carson. He'll make a move up the middle, and Wills Point makes the tackle at about the 35-yard line. That'll be a gain of about four. It'll be second and six. Panthers still looking to get this pass game going, get Weston Johnson a little bit comfortable back there. Trips right for the Panthers this time. Here's the snap. It's going to be another pass by Johnson. Rolls out to the right, has his man in the flat. That's Carson again, another three or four yards. So bring up another third down for the Panthers, th third and four. Panthers using the sticks game with their short routes to try to s spread this field out a little bit, open up some running lanes for Weston Johnson in the backfield. Single man coverage here close to the sideline. This is going to be another 
handoff up the middle to Upchurch. He'll have enough for a Panther first down. And that's a great rhythm right there to get into. A couple outside passes, pick up your short yardage, make it a manageable third down, and just let your quarterback rumble on the ground. That's what the Panthers need to do to have success, and they've got the receivers to do it in this matchup as the Tigers like to come out and man, and if they can get man coverage, especially down here on Brady Carson, uh, then they have exactly what they want for the deep strike, but this short yardage gain right now is working perfectly. Carson goes in motion out of the backfield. Here's the snap. It's going to be another handoff to Upchurch. Upchurch will get back to the line of scrimmage and not much more. They'll say he got a yard. It'll be second down and nine. So the Panthers looking here. They're going to try to roll Weston Johnson out a little bit here, and they're going to try to manufacture some chunk plays as Weston Johnson is actually going to move out, and they're going to move Brady Carson into the quarterback position into that wildcat formation. They're going to move – Brady Johnson back. Well, they're going to go into that three-back set with Brady Carson lined up as the quarterback. Carson takes the snap. He'll go to the right side looking for the edge, and now he'll cut it back up the middle. Not much running room there. He'll get about three, and now he'll bring up another third down and seven. Other action here in the area. Salina up on Paris in the second quarter, 28-7. Dallas Carter up on Sulphur Springs, 27 to 21. Third and six, 746 left to go in the third quarter. Five receiver set, empty set for the Panthers. Here's the snap, Johnson goes back to pass under pressure. He steps up in the pocket. Now he's rolling out to the left, looking for some room and he won't get it as he is Brought down just past the line of scrimmage, a gain of one, and so the Panthers will send out the punt team after the failed third down. Well, another drive bogged down there. Unable to get it going in, in between the tackles. Had success on the at the beginning of the drive, kind of throwing the ball outside and moving Brady Carson around, try to manufacture some offense, but once they get back to in between the tackles, just tough sledding. Kick is away from Braden Miller. Directional kick to the right. And that'll go out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. And that's where the Tigers will take over first and 10. Some other regional action. Melissa up 21-7 at halftime over White House. Lovejoy fresh off their victory over Melissa last week in the district championship. Leading Longview Pine Tree 14-6 in a surprising score at halftime. Marshall up 14 to 10 on Denison in halftime as well. You know, going back to that conversation, who the best foot? I think if you look at most valuable player that's ever played in Van Austin, maybe not the best, but the most valuable, Will Smith. Will Smith was an excellent quarterback for this team and safety. A 2001 state finalist team. Here's the snap. This is going to be a handoff to Dowden around the left side. Tough run in there. He gets about three yards. It'll be second and seven. Tackle there by number four, Rhett Smith. For a minimal gain, two yards. Three yards brings up second and third for this Tigers offense, who has struggled just as much as this Panthers offense. Both defenses put up a pretty good effort so far. Trips right for the Tigers this time. Here's the snap. It'll be another handoff to Dowden going around the right side. The Panthers were ready for it that time. Who was that that came up? One of Chris Nance's favorite players there, Jonah Price on the tackle. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That oh, was number, number 21. 24. Colton McCaslin comes up and makes the play. Excellent play. Loss of four, and it'll be third down and 11. So third and 11. Wills Point looks to the sideline for the play. Jet Fletcher. Been pretty quiet here since that second quarter. Here's the snap. Fletcher is going to do a delayed handoff to Ooh. Dowden, and he is hit by a host of Panthers. Nice play there by this defensive unit. Couple of really hard hits on that play. Finished off by number nine, Keegan Daly. And so the Panthers defense answers the call. Yeah, It'll be Keegan Daly and uh, Rhett Smith both. 
Why is it only 12 to 7 on the scoreboard? They took that two point off. Did they? Yeah, which is bizarre. So it's only 12 to 7. Our scoreboard says 14 to 7. We'll get that changed momentarily. So on that penalty, they took the two points away. They didn't make the announcement. But they didn't even really give them a chance to do anything about it either. No, they didn't. This is a punt that will be taken by Carson at the 40, makes a move, gets to the 45 and to the 50 where he's pushed out of bounds at midfield at the 48-yard line of Wills Point. Panthers start off with excellent field position. First and ten. You, yeah, might, you not, might just need to restart the scoreboard. Having issues getting it brought up. Yeah, this is, you know, I'm, I expect to see some shots start getting taken by this Panthers offense. They've had their matchups with, especially with Brady Carson, getting them out here and getting them isolated. And it's just a matter of keeping that protection at the line and giving Weston Johnson enough time to make that throw. So the Panthers offense will come out first and 10, trips right to the short side of the field. You can see down Solo here. Solo receiver. Who is that down here? Is that Brady, Brady Carson? Carson? Isolated down here. This is going to be a handoff to Upchurch. Mm. Tough sledding again. Another flag. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's, is that, that might be Benedict actually on there. There's another. He did Looks mention like the flag. It's going to be a flag. That is Benedict in. The freshman running back there. So picking up a few yards. He's going to get a little bit more on the penalty. And so. That'll be enough for a Panther first down. So the Panthers have it now. First and 10 from the 32-yard line of the Tigers. Again, Brady Carson solo coverage down here by Roland. Here's the snap. It's going to be a pass, ah. and it was just behind Brady Carson as he was going in for the slant. Johnston... Off just a little bit. Boy, I'd love to see a a sluggo route right there. Wouldn't you? Yeah. A little slant and go. He's got him beat inside. This multi, you know, they got him set up to where, you know, he's been more running that slant route more than any other route, and he's been successful at it. Here's the snap. This is going to be a handoff up the middle. Nice hold there for the Panthers. I believe that was Benedict again. Good run there by the freshman. And so it'll be third down. And four, four fifteen left to go in the first half. Or sorry, second half. Excuse me. And they got a free play here. Here's Justin. the snap. Johnston going over the middle, and it's nearly picked off. But they'll have the first down after the offsides. So the Tigers get a little antsy and jump off sides. Looks like they're bringing a little pressure on the third down. Going to try to get back there and disrupt the pass and those passing lanes by Weston Johnson. But good recognition by Johnston to take the shot. It'll be a first down for the Panthers right at the 21-yard line of the Tigers, and it'll be first and 10. The Panthers are threatening. Benedict remains the running back in the game for the Panthers. Watch this wheel route right here, Justin. Carson goes in motion, goes back to pass. Johnston hits Carson on the screen. And he's hit oh, out of bounds. That should be a flag. There, there is. is, yeah, late hit out of bounds. Yeah, as Carson was four steps out of bounds when he got hit, and so that'll be another 15 yards tacked onto it. They're gonna go half the distance. Half on the that distance. One. That's probably gonna put it right around the five yard line. Boy, you know they've been really close to on their sideline with some of these hits. I, I thought that there's a few that could have gone either way earlier in the ball game. That one was pretty egregious. So that that one's gonna move them half the distance to the goal. It's gonna get them a new. Set of downs inside the 10 yard line. So, this is going to put it first and goal from the eight yard line. Trips right, short side of the field. Carson, here's the snap. It's going to be a hand or take by Weston Johnston up the middle. Inside of four minutes to go in the third quarter. Panthers still trailing 12 to 7 here, but threatening deep in Tiger territory as they move it one yard second and goal from the seven now it's trips left for the Panthers the solo receiver out to the right is Castro Fonseca who's been very quiet tonight here's the snap it'll be another take by Johnson and he will walk into the end zone Panthers have tied up they're actually taking the lead 13 to 12 
And we'll see what Coach Miller does here. I would imagine he goes for two to make it a three-point score. Now this is the Panthers offense that we've become accustomed to. A nice rhythm, a nice mixture of interior runs, spread out with outside runs, some jet sweeps, and some sticks routes. And this thing is rolling here. No issues on that drive whatsoever to go up 13 to 12 as they're looking to make it a three-point lead. I expect Wesson Johnson to, there it is. Here's the snap. Oh. Nearly picked off again. But it'll fall innocently to the turf, and the Panthers will have a 13 to 12 lead with three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Yeah, I don't think Weston Johnson's seeing the field very well right now, especially, he's, you know, they, they got the term seeing ghost. I don't think he's seeing it. He's, he's just not seeing anything. Yep. I think he's getting confused out there with some zone coverages, and he's just missing his man a little bit. That one was you know, one of those throws that you want back. But, again, two interceptions on the day. He's had a fairly good game on the ground, uh, scores there on the ground. Again, this is a guy that beats you with his legs more than his arm, and he's a, he's a big heavy back when he gets rolling. But that, that rhythm of that offensive drive is what this Panthers team is all about. If they can keep, continue to do that. So the senior Bryce McDaniel and number 22, Dowden, back deep for the Tigers. Janik looking to kick. Deep kick, this one will go to 13, they're going to fake, fake the reverse. This is number 13, McDaniel. Nice spin move Spin there. move gets up the field. Only a couple more yards, though, and they'll start off deep in their own territory at the 13, or sorry, 17-yard line. Yeah, Panthers do a good job maintaining their lanes there on coverage. Looked like they were going to attempt the, uh, the reverse, maybe setting that up for the future, but Panthers played it well. Minimal return there. Only gets it up to about that. 18, 17 yard line, which is only about a four yard return. So first and 10, 316 left to go in the third quarter. Wills Point trailing 13 to 12. Here's the snap. It'll be Fletcher taking it himself. Around the left side, that cuts back up the middle. This is going to be a gain of about four. Second and six coming up after the Fletcher run. Tigers are still being really physical there at the point of attack. They're just intent on running the ball between those tackles and grinding this thing out. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Dowden around the left side. The physical ball is out. out. And do the Panthers fall on it? No indication yet from the side. They're going to say it's uh, recovered by the Tigers. Ooh, dodged the so ball on the that one. Panthers nearly come up with a big play. That was a huge tackle. Big hit there on Dowden, and he lost the ball immediately. And so now a big third down for this Tigers team. Don't want to give it back up to the Panthers with all the momentum. Trips right this time for the Tigers. Here's the snap. Fletcher rolls out to the right. Hits his man. Nice play there on the nice throw on the run to number three, Cooper O'Neill. What a heck of a throw there by Fletcher running to his right. And throwing a dime there over coverage. It'll yeah, be first down. Well, it was pretty good coverage there by Braden Miller and Brady Carson. They were in tight. It was a great pass. Number so, 11, Joseph Rowland just. No, that was number three. Was it number Cooper O'Neill with the catch? Me. Yeah. Four receivers set this time, two to each side. Here is the snap from Fletcher here. He's going to take it himself up the middle and now bounce out to the right, still looking for some room. And he gets a minimal gain of about two or three before he's brought down by a host of Panthers. 
And so it'll be second down and seven. Under two minutes to play here in Kimbrough Stadium. Good one between the Panthers and the Tigers, 13 to 12 in this by-district action. Again, the winner will go on to play the defending state champion Carthage Bulldogs next week. Three receivers set, two to the left on this second down and seven play. Here's the snap. It's going to be a pitch to Roland, trying to get the edge. He does get the edge. He's got enough for a first down and more. He's at the 45-40, one oh. man to beat. Can he beat Carson? He will as Roland takes it the distance and goes 63 yards for the score, and the Tigers retake the lead from the Panthers. Well, it looks like the, the Tigers caught the Panthers out of alignment. Uh, it looks like Knox, Knox Wilson was wanting a little help over there on the short end of the field, exactly where they ran the ball. Uh, wasn't able to get an extra man over in time as they go in motion. Brady Carson moves over. Knox Wilson's left out kind of to dry for the big run. And so it is an 18-13 lead for Will's point. They will go for two to make it a seven-point game. And Fletcher is confused, didn't have enough personnel, and they'll send out the man Roland who scored on the last play back into the game. And the refs will make them stop, check and see if the Panthers need a substitution, and now we're ready. Big two-point conversion here. Here's the snap. Fletcher rolls out to the right, still looking, still looking. Makes a move. Oh! Over the top. Nice play there by Fletcher, and it'll be a conversion of two. And this will be a 20-13 to 13 ball game with under a minute to play in the third quarter. Van Alstine finds himself down as we go back and forth here in the second half. Nice Nice second half so far. A lot of action. Yeah, it's a nice play there by the Jet. Keeping that play alive, moving outside of the pocket. and Had the Panthers bite. Thought he was going to run it himself. He's able to kind of throw a pop pass over the top. Catches the Panthers sleeping as they go up by seven. And so for a first half that was six to nothing for the majority of two quarters, now becomes 20 to 13, and we haven't even gotten to the fourth quarter yet. So we've gone from no offense to a ton of offense as the team exchanges a couple of touchdowns here in the third quarter. 57 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Panthers down 20 to 13. They will be getting the ball here momentarily. Brady Carson and Braden Miller back deep for the Panthers, standing at their own 10 yard line awaiting the kick. You know, the past few years, these bi-district games have been very uneventful, just blowouts. And uh, around this time, we're pretty much trying to figure out who they're playing next week. This one still well in doubt. Been a good ball game so far and a lot of fireworks to come here in the fourth quarter, it looks like. Kick is away. This one's going to be a short kick right in the middle. That's going to be trouble. But Carson fields it well. I'm sorry, Miller fields it well and gets to the 32-yard line. Good return. The Panthers will have good field position here. First and 10 from the 32. 50 seconds remain in the third quarter. I want to thank you all for joining us on tonight's broadcast. Yeah, could not Could not be here at the game. Might as well tune in to watch these Panthers play. We've got 177 people watching us right now. We appreciate every, each and every one of you. And we know that a lot of you will be watching through the week, a lot of the players. Um, and we appreciate every view that we get. Panthers come out in a four-receiver set, two to each side this time. Johnston takes the snap. This is going to be a handoff. And started going right and then cuts back to the left. Push this pile and we got up. a rugby. There you go. Rugby scrum going up about three or four more yards. Nice play there. Nice run by Upchurch. As he takes the pile with him, another four yards, and now it makes it a second down and three. Big number 52. Zach, Zach Thomas. Thomas, who's also the captain of the offense, one of the captains. Get in there, gets his feet churning, gets his ball carrier a couple more yards there. A bunch trip set to the right. Sends Caden Chandler in motion from left to right, and now a flag comes out. Looks like it might be a legal motion. Uh, 
I didn't see who wasn't set when. That'll be a five-yard penalty on the Panthers, and who now a second and three returns to a second and eight. Who wasn't set when they put Chandler in motion? Everybody was set. I didn't see anything. And that is the end of the third quarter. A good one so far tonight, 20-13 to 13 here as Wills Point has the lead over your Van Alstine Panthers going into the fourth quarter. A game that we didn't think would be this, this close is, yeah, we didn't and think exciting has turned out to be an actual, one of the better playoff games that we've called so far yeah. together. It's been a great game. There's been a, you know, there's been a couple of do-overs that I think both teams wish they had at this point. Like I said, there's been four turnovers in the game. Wills Point nearly turned it over uh, on that touchdown drive that they just had. Um, they were lucky and able to fall on their own fumble, though, keep it out of the Panthers' hands, as that would have been disastrous as they were at about their own 30. Uh, but they were able to go down and put seven on the board, excuse me, eight on the board after the two-point conversion, make this a seven-point game. But uh, there's an entire fourth quarter to play, and this is a Panthers team that we know, and we say it week to week, as Coach Miller has his team ready to play, and they're always ready to fight. And so in a close ball game like this, you know, I still trust my guys. I know that they're going to go out there and they're going to fight every last second and every last down. So you've got plenty of time here with 12 minutes in the fourth quarter to get a nice, slow, methodical drive on the books here. Johnson takes the snap in this first play of the fourth quarter. Big play. Gets about six or seven. Definitely the penalty yardage back. And now it's going to be a more manageable third down and two from the 40-yard line. Got to get the 42. Panthers going quick. Have trips right this time. Tigers showing blitz, and now they'll stand off to, to get an audible call from my, Coach Michael Miller. Here's the snap. It's going to be a quarterback take all the way. Big hole on the left side. He's, He's got, got a hole. The first down gets down to the 50-yard line. The hole close quick. Weston Johnson was able to get the first down and more. And so at midfield, first and 10. Tight bunch formation this time. Receivers all close to the line. Here's the snap. It's going to be a pitch out to the running back. Got a, lane. got a nice little lane there for the freshman, Benedict. He's at the 30, still on his feet. Crosses the 30 down to the 27-yard line. Nice run there by the freshman. Got some wheels and some moves and gets into Tiger territory. Down to the 27, and the Panthers are in business. Here's the snap and another handout. No, it'll be uh, Weston Johnson taking around the right side. Cuts up the middle and gets another Panther first down. Yeah, oh, they're going to say he's going to shy short. one yard. Pardon me. Pardon second, me. second and one. And this, this tight bunch receiver formation working right now, is really doing you. wonders and it's confusing these Tigers. Here's the snap. It's going to be another pitch out to the running back, Benedict, and he was hauled in behind the line of scrimmage. The Tigers were not confused on that play. And now it'll be third down and three. Yeah, they try to come back to that same play that they just ran that went big for Benedict. Try to run to the opposite side of the field. <clears throat> They'll sub in Keegan Daly for Benedict, a little bigger backed this time. And you got to wonder if they're, you think they're resting, uh, you think they're resting up church to use them later in the game? Or you well, think he, was, just... he was running earlier on this drive. I think they gave him a break. But he was a little banged up in the first half, so interesting to see if that's going to play a difference here late in the ball game. Here's the snap. It's going to be a Weston Johnson take all the way. I don't know if he got it. He's going to be well, short. Gonna be short. It's going to be short about a yard. This is going to be a big fourth down and one for the Panthers. Under 10 minutes to play here in the ball game, down seven. I say you do that play one more time. Just let Weston Johnson get that tough yard. Just to, this is a long one, though. This is almost two. I tell you, I, I think you try to get the ball in Brady Carson's hands and you let him just kind of maneuver and dance. Here's the snap. Johnston oh. going to take it himself. It looks like he has He's enough for it. the Panthers' first down. Good call, Justin. And it'll be first and ten now inside the 20-yard line. Brady Carson's Carson slow to get, to get up. up, yeah. 
So inside the Tiger red zone, nine minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Panthers driving, trying to tie this ball game up. Come out of Wildcat, Justin. Carson will take the snap, and he'll roll out to the right. Looking to pass. Actually hits his man in the flat. He's got a little space, and that's yeah. Braden Miller in for a Panther touchdown. Oh, what a play. Wow, well, man, nice call there. Usually out of the Wildcat, they're going to run the Wildcat, but Carson does have some experience playing quarterback, and Braden Miller came off his block in the flat and made the catch, and you'll see the replay here, Chris. It was a thing of beauty as he comes out of the backfield and takes it in for a Panther score. Sorry we couldn't get the view of the touchdown, but you'll have to take our word for it as the Panthers try to tie it up. High snap, it is taken down, and the kick is good, and so the Panthers have tied it up with 8.42 left to play in the ball game. It is a 20-20 game, and we'll see what this Panthers defense does to respond. And again, just kind of reset here, this is a game that was six to nothing through most of the first half until the Panthers were able to put up a touchdown with nine seconds left to end the half. Both teams come out here and they exchange a couple of touchdowns as we got a 20 to 20 ball game here with eight minutes and 42 seconds left in Murphy, Texas at Joe Kimbrough Stadium. Out here, Plano ISD Stadium, home of the Plano East and Plano West wow. and Plano High. Is that what they are now? I believe so. The Thundercats, the, Wolves, the Wildcats. The, it's not the Thundercats. The Thundercats, the Wildcats. It looks like the Thundercats logo, but it's uh, some – I think it's the Wildcats, the Tigers, and the uh, Wolves. That's got it. That's, not, that's a Bobcat. Yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. I also don't care. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> so, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. So the Panthers will kick it away. Back deep for the Tigers – is Dowden and McDaniel. McDaniel been very quiet tonight. He is their leading receiver on the year, but they have really put the screws to him tonight. And Roland has been the leading receiver for the Tigers. Talking to their broadcast team at halftime, he is definitely having his best game of the season. And it's going to be another fake reverse, and this is going to be McDaniel taking oh. it. Nearly got him at the 10. He's still on his feet. They better. Breaks the 20. Had him down at about the 10. And made an extra 10 yards. We have eclipsed the 200 people watching mark tonight. Thank you. Big That's time. awesome. If you, see, it's if, a, you, if you so, see a limo driving through Van Austin, don't be alarmed. It's me. It's not Burt Reynolds. I'm pretty much a celebrity. You know, it's wild. Eh? You, I think our sponsors would really love to get some exposure tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Sorry. due to the UIL guidelines, no sponsors. So, But you uh, know where you can go get a hammer. You know. You know where you can get a hammer. Here's the snap by Fletcher. It's going to be a hand. Oh, he's going to take it himself around the right side looking for a hole. And he gets about six, now well, five. It'll be second and five. Try to get that outside run going. Panthers got big number 70. Levi Ryan kind of absorbing that interior line there. He's done a really good job. I've, I've been watching him. He's been kind of controlling those A gaps for the Panthers, not letting anything get up the middle, let them focus on – Pushing everything back inside. He's doing a really good job out of his nose position. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff. Nice uh, play there by the Panthers defense. Jonah Price got in there and altered the play quickly and made Keegan. Dowden bounce out, and Keegan Daly was there to clean it up. Yeah, Keegan Daly is just Mr. Clean. He, he He's from his backside defensive end position. He just cleans up. He can get across the field and – can lay some wood too. He's got a he's a big hitter. So the biggest third down of the game is right now. Seven and a half minutes to go. The Panthers defense can get off the field here and put it in the offense hand that seems to be rolling right now. This is a big play in the possibly determining the end of this game. Fletcher has the play and now he's ready. Here's the snap. It's going to be a quarterback take. Oh. And he'll have enough for a Tiger first down as Fletcher keeping those hopes alive for the Tigers. 
Nice play there by the quarterback. And now we have another injured Panther. This one is number 27 for the Panthers. That's gonna be Tim Martinez. So the Panthers have kind of been bitten by the injury bug here tonight. If we've had several Panthers go down, luckily a couple of them were able to jump back up and continue contributing, one being Michael Upchurch, who was slow to get up in the first half, the other being Keegan Daly, who came up big there on a couple of plays on that last drive or on this current drive. But this is a, uh, this is a, a pivotal drive here. For the Tigers, they've got to maintain this drive and try to bleed some of this clock out before they give the Panthers back the ball with seven minutes to go in the half. Or, excuse me, seven minutes to go in the game as they uh, attend to the down Panther. Tim Martinez, the injured Panther on the play as the crowd goes very quiet, the quietest we've heard them all night. We've had a few injuries tonight. This one seems to have shaken him up. It's got a – don't know. It's uh, – that was Tim Martinez, correct, Nash? I, I wasn't – I wasn't – you call me Nash? I did. Sorry, that's my son's name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, daddy? <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing right now. Um, but, yeah, that is Tim Martinez that is down for the Panthers. And he's going to pop, pop up. up. That's gonna, good news. Looks like he's going to walk off under his own recognizance, which is which is good. Hopefully he can get over there and shake off the the hurt a little bit and get back in the game. He's going to make his way to the sideline as his Panthers defense trots back out to the field. Hope that that is uh, nothing too serious for Martinez as he makes his way to the Panther bench. So first and 10 for the Tigers. Seven minutes to go in the game. First and 10 from the 35. Here's the snap. It's going to be a quarterback take by Fletcher going around the right side, and he's brought down by Keegan Daly behind the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Daly. Excellent play by Been Daly. Been all over the place tonight. He really has. He's Coming up big in the biggest moments of the game so far. And again, he hey, this is a guy that was he was <clears throat> banged up a little bit there earlier in the game. Lucky for the Panthers, he's able to shake it off and get back in there. He's been a big contributor on defense. Of course, he's been a big contributor all season long on defense. He's he's one of these core leaders. They get in there and they provide that spark in that interior in the front seven. Here's the snap. This is going to be a quarterback take around the right, left side this time. Fletcher just does his best to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Panthers were all over that one. It's going to be third down and ten coming up now. With six minutes to go. Yeah, second consecutive quarterback keep, trying to get him outside of those tackles, get him out, out of that box, and Panthers are ready for it. They've tested both sides, first being to Keegan Daly's side, that one to be in the number four, Rhett Smith's side. Both, the, both defenders for the Panthers ready take on that lead block, make the tackle. They do a great job setting up a long third down here for the Tigers. And, again, this is a pivotal drive. The Tigers need to come out here and get some points with 535 left. They don't want to give Panther the ball deep into their own territory. Here's the snap. Fletcher goes back to pass this time. He'll hit his man as uh, he hits a, a slant, and he's upended there by number two, Knox Wilson. Well, I tell you, small but mighty. Small but mighty. Great tackle by Knox Wilson. He actually comes in there and upends the ball carrier. Brings up a fourth and six. So they're going to bring on the punt team. And again, hey, this is uh, this is the Panthers game right now to take. They've got to get a big return here and get their offense out there. Brady Carson will be returning for the Panthers. They've been kicking away from – he hadn't had a chance so far to uh, to get a return as they've been kicking away. Haven't really had a good punt tonight, this Tigers offense, so our special teams unit. Brady Carson stands at his own 25 awaiting the punt. Snap is away. It's a good snap. Kick is away. Line drive kick. He'll have a chance. No, it takes a good Tiger Peter, bounce. Peter, Peter. And bounces out to the 34-yard line, and the Panthers will take over. First and 10 with 437 left to go in the ball game and a chance – to take the lead, possibly for good. 
And a great ball game tonight. All you can ask for in a playoff matchup. This by district championship looks like it'll be decided here in the last minutes of this ball game, and possibly overtime. Panthers with pretty good start and field position as they trot out here. They're looking to bleed as much time as they can, but they also want to get points. That bunch formation again. Here's the snap. Goes back to pass as Johnston hits his man in the flat. That's Carson. He's at the 40, 45, and then tripped up at about the 48-yard line. First down for the Panthers. Nice first play on this drive as Carson is starting to heat up here in this second half. And Johnston looks a lot more comfortable back there. Here's the snap. It's going to be a take by Johnston. Hole to the left side. And he'll get about six. It'll be second down and four for the Panthers with four, ten left to go and ticking. No rush for the Panthers. There's plenty of time. Both teams have all three of their timeouts left. As Keegan Daly checks in at the up back position, he's going to spell Caden Benedict, the freshman. Here's the snap. It's going to be a quarterback take all the way. He gets a, about two or three yards. He's going to be about a yard shy, it looks like. Third down and one. He's at the 43-yard line, has to gain the 42. So they like to bring Keegan in, and they like to use him as a lead blocker. So watch Weston as he follows Keegan's block. Here's the snap, and he's hit right at the line of he's scrimmage. Forward, he does push forward, it. and he does get it. It's another Panther first down. The clock will stop while they sing the chip. Well, they move the change. You see Chains. what I'm talking about, though? Oh, they yeah. bring Keegan in. They use him kind of like a fullback. So that's pretty much their eye formation. That's their power formation where they bring in a big defensive player, and they're going to pull him out. They're going to bring Benedict back in. Like I said before, Keegan Daly, a big bruiser. He can punish people. So he gets in there and leads the way for his quarterback to pick up this first down late here in the fourth quarter with about three minutes left as the time clicks off. It's a 20-20 game. Panthers driving. Three minutes left to go in the game. First and 10. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Benedict. Big hole over on the left side. He's at the 35-30. One man to beat. Trips over him. Gets enough for the Panther first down. Boy, he is quick. I tell you. And who would have known a few weeks ago we'd have a freshman playing huge minutes over Juarez and Upchurch and, and after the injuries. Here's the snap. Panthers going quick. It's going to be a pass out to the flat. This is Brady Carson at the 30. 20. Makes a move. He's at the 10. One man to beat. He's still on his feet. The Panthers yeah! score and take the lead with 2.35 left to go in the game. The Panthers up 26 to 20 with the extra point coming up. Nice play there by Brady uh. Carson. And we apologize. Our camera doesn't hit that far corner, and that seems to be where all the dang action <laughs> is tonight. Oh, man. I tell you, hey, big players make big plays and big times. Hey, this is a... This is a moment for the senior here, Brady Carson, to, to shine, and he does. He gets the ball and is able to dance his way through that secondary, drags a defender over the goal line for the touchdown. What a play, Brady Carson, for the touchdown. So the extra point, a big one here. Let's see if it goes through. It does, and the Panthers are up 27 to 20 with 2.36 left to play in the game. Obviously, plenty of time for the Tigers to score, so the Panthers' defense needs Ooh, to I'll be on I tell you right here. now, I'm watching Coach Miller, and it looks like he is lit up about something. He wants a penalty called. He is out there just letting them have it. I didn't quite see what happened. Maybe He's look still jawing with him a little bit. Maybe look on the replay. Oh, yeah, he jumped over the center. That's why. Okay. So, you know, obviously on kicking downs, you cannot you cannot line up directly over the center, and you cannot jump over the center. Can't even do, can't even do that in the pros. You can't do that in any level. No. So I think that's what Coach Miller's really he's, – he's wanting a penalty on it because that's now the second time that they've done that. And that penalty would be huge because it would put the uh, kickoff right at the 45-yard yeah, line. Yeah, put the Tigers in, starting deep into their own territory. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an important call to, 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 to miss – this late in the game with two minutes and 30 seconds left, but the Panthers' defense has its work cut out for them as they have got to come up with a big stop here. And I tell you, if, if you want the de – if you want – if this team out of the three – if you want the hands of – if you want the ball in the hand – how do you say this? If, if you want one of your aspects of the team to have the chance to put it away, I trust my defense in this situation. They've they've risen to the occasion multiple times this this season. They've – They've risen to the occasion tonight. So this is going to be a big defensive series here. I mean, this is the ball game, and this is a season for a lot of these guys. So, I mean, Kick is away. It's a line drive kick. Good kick. It's going to be fielded by McDaniel. He's at the 25 and up, to, up ended again. 
Big hit there by Jonah Price. Yeah, Jonah Price getting it done on special teams. I'm telling you, he's a special player. He's a special player, and he's only a junior, so we get him next year as well. Don't want to talk about next year as we're deep in the throes of this playoff run right now, but Jonah Price has that spark, and I've seen a lot of things tonight that I'm excited about nope. moving forward for Panther football. But I'll tell you what I'm excited about. It's 2.30 left to go in this game. The Panthers are up 27-20, to 20, and the Panthers' defense has been lights out here in the last couple of drives. We'll see if they can continue this momentum. As Fletcher and the Tiger offense is ready to go, starting at their own 30-yard line. Again, 2.30 left to play in the game. Panthers have just taken the lead, 27-20. to 20. Here's the snap. This is going to be a take by Jet ah. Fletcher. He's got enough for a first down. Oh, got tackled right before the first down, actually. It's going to be second and nine coming up. Yeah, and the play that's there, really, buddy. really hurt the Panthers for most of the night by Jeff, Jet Fletcher. Benny the Jet Fletcher getting it done there. Man, what a name, Jet. What a name. You Second can only one. be – you got, you got to be fast if your name's Jet, though. Like, I couldn't be a Jet. Here's the snap. This is going to be a handoff to Dowden. Mm. He's got enough for the first down and more. Upended at the 50. And so the Tigers move into Panthers territory. Panthers got to buckle down here. They have just given up way too much in that interior. You the know, clock like, is still running, even I, though the chains are – I mean, they're they're upset over on that sideline. They should be. These, either way, trips left for the Tigers. 145 left to go in the game. Jet Fletcher takes the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Dowden. Makes a cut up the middle, and he's going to get down to the 45-yard line with 133 left to go in the game, and I would imagine they're going to take their first time out, and they do. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, the Panthers are just giving up too much to start this drive in that interior. They need to shore that up. You know, I, I, last series they had big number 70 in there, Levi Ryan, and he seemed to be the answer to clog up this middle. He's not in there right now, but I'm be interested if they start to pull him in or pull him back in as they've just been eating up that interior on this drive. But again, clock runs. Will's Point's got two timeouts left with a minute 30 to play, but. They are in Panther territory at the 45. So 45 yards separates the Panthers and moving on for another by-district title. Let's see if the Panthers' defense hunkers down here. Second and six. As the Panthers' crowd comes to live here late. Trips right, sends Roland in motion. They'll pitch it to him, and now it's going to be a reverse. The Panthers look like they're ready for it, and they were. As Dowden was tackled by a host of Panthers, they were not fooled on that reverse at all. And they take a huge chunk of time off the clock running that reverse. And they're they're gonna, not going to get it. They're going to be less than a minute when they get this next snap off, Justin. That was they're a, not calling a timeout here. That was like. just a, a horrible play call by this one. <laughs> and because they're subbing, the refs are letting they're the not, Panthers exactly. get a sub in. And so it's under a minute to go on this third down play. Here's the snap. Goes back to pass this Fletcher. He has a man in the flat. He didn't hit him. And now he's going over the top. And he doesn't have a man. Boy, he should have hit that guy first in the flat. Yeah, he tried to get the big play instead of picking up that, fourth, uh, that first down. So I'm telling you, this is going to bring up fourth down. This is the play of the season right now for this Van Alstine Panthers team. For both teams looking to get out of here with a win, but Panthers defense has shown up. So fourth and four with 54 seconds left. They're not going to call a timeout to discuss it. They're just going to go out and play. Big play. This is the play of the ball game here. Can the Panthers defense tighten up and end this thing? Four receivers set, two to each side. Fletcher has the snap. He's under pressure immediately. Goes over the middle. And oh, no. oh, no. They're not going to call no it. Call. No call. And the Panthers' defense is up for the task. And it'll be a turnover on downs. And that should be the end of the game and the end of the Wills Point Tiger season. Woo, I tell you. Yeah, I'm not sure if that, that was thrown into triple coverage. But oh, the Panthers are lucky there that... They he was get, hit before that ball they, they got did, there. Yeah, for but sure. I mean, that, hey, that's such a bang bang play. You know, this late in the game, do you really want it to come down to a call? Uh, no, not at all. So, uh, you know, I think that. Uh, and so we are right next to the Panthers' coaching staff as they celebrate that big fourth down 
play by the Panthers defense. And what was it? They're going to call a sideline pit. They're going to call side a sideline infraction yeah. on Will Will's point, and so that'll only help the Panthers cause. They've only been, they've already been warned. So, so that's why they have the penalty here. And of course, they were out on the field wanting that pass interference call on that last incomplete pass that ended the game, or that's going to end the game, but didn't get it. That's what the penalty's for. They were all the way out at the numbers, past the numbers, yelling at the refs. So they're going to move this off, and the Panthers are going to be able game. to kneal this Four. and get out of here with a. 48 seconds left to go in the game. The Panthers up 27 to 20. They'll just kneel it a couple times. And we will get out of Murphy, Texas by district champions once again. The Panthers will go and play the defending state champions next week. The Carthage Bulldogs, the same team that knocked them out of the playoffs a year ago. And it is a mighty task. The nine-time state champion. Carthage Bulldogs await are, these Van Alstine Panthers. And I tell you, if you're looking for something to equate with the Carthage Bulldogs and their run of dominance, they've got a better run of dominance now than the Solana Bobcats did when they were breaking all the records Which back in the early oh, unheard late 90s of back and early then. 2000s. So whereas the Solana Bobcats went four in a row and had the longest streak of unbeaten seasons, Carthage is now at how many? They've won. This will be their third this straight be their title, I believe. Third it, straight. Well, or on the cha on the way for a third yes, straight title. Yes. So, and they've got nine total state championships. So that is what you'd call a powerhouse. Now that's coming out of East Texas and East Texas football. I tell you, you it know, is, it's, it's, it's 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 a tough. different brand, it you is. know. And and, there, and there's different brands. You know, the you get Van Austin, you get to get the central Central Texas type football atmosphere and then you got the west texas football atmosphere and we've been you know we played monahans a few years ago so we know about that well you just love to bag on monahans <laughs> i got a buddy that's from monahan now i gotta i gotta let him hear it but you know we did play monahans you know so so second uh they're gonna back it up i guess the uh, panthers had a false start so it'll be 27 to 20 uh 46 seconds left they called their last or their second time out did uh will's point now, they can call another one, but uh, it'll be third down after that la next time out, and the Panthers will still have enough to get rid of it, rid of the game, yeah. And thank you to all 258 people that have tuned in right now. Appreciate you uh, giving us your time. I appreciate you supporting this Van Alstine Panthers football team. You know, that's the – in case we don't get a chance to say it, you know, we talked about earlier that – this may be our last game to broadcast this now, year. If, if this year, now as we go forward, you know, if we do beat Carthage next year, which next or week. next week, would you just let me go, man? It's okay. We do beat Carthage next week. Um, we'll probably be back in the broadcast booth as the official broadcast for that game. But and um, it's it's not a hundred percent that we're not going to be in the booth next week. We're just I, kind uh, of yeah, we're, we're just kind of feeling that, it out yeah. here. But uh, if we're not in the booth next week, we do want to say thank you guys and and gals. For tuning in and, and being with us every week, we appreciate you guys supporting Van Austin Panther Athletics. We love athletics, Justin and I and Carter. Um, we do this because we love we love the community that we live in. We love the school that our kids go to. We want to be a part of the community. And this is kind of our way to give back in any way that we can. And we know it's not a lot, but we do appreciate everyone supporting us and being with us and also supporting the school. And that's the whole point behind it is to be able to get out here and as we nil it and in this game, get out here and, 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 you know, cheer on these guys. They've, they've worked their tails off all summer long. Um, two days in the summer, they get in the heat. It's been a hot year all year. That turf down there is about 160 degrees in the summer. So, and it's all worth it when you get to, when you get hold to up this. some, hold up some hardware exactly at the end of the right. year. And the Panthers are going to do that. They'll get their by district trophy tonight. It is something they've become accustomed to here in the last few years, and they'll get another one tonight. Again, they've got a big test ahead of them next week against Carthage, but they're not worried about that tonight. Tonight's for celebrating, a big playoff win. They don't come around very often. Uh, playoff wins are a big deal, and so when you get them, you need to celebrate them, and the Panthers will do that tonight, and so will we. We really appreciate the effort that both teams put out tonight. Will's point gave it their all, and uh, they gave the Panthers all they had tonight. 
and excellent game. It just sides. wasn't enough, and the Panthers walk out of Kimbrough Stadium, 27 to 20 winners of the by district championship. And again, as Chris, I'll echo, echo his sentiments. We thank you so much for tuning in week in and week out. Uh, we hope this isn't our last broadcast of the year. We'll keep you posted through the social media and through the school. Uh, if we are broadcasting next week, it'll be right here on this YouTube page again. Um, but you know. Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I just want to say thank you like Chris did, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again this year. But if not, we will be back in the broadcast booth next year as the Panthers bring out the Gatorade to throw out on Coach, Let's Coach see Miller. I don't know. I'm, I'm really him. curious. He sees them coming. He's, it's not like it's a surprise. He's watching. He's already looking. Look, at, look, they're trying to find him. I don't think they know where he's they at. I don't know where he's at. They lost him. Well, either way, Chris, let's go ahead and uh, – Give us your thoughts on the player of the game tonight. Well, I tell you, you know, I got to give it to this defense. They played their butts off in that first half, uh, only gave up six points the entire first half, and then they came out here. They get the big stop. I'm giving it just to the entire defensive squad. This was a phenomenal effort. Like you talked about, playoffs, playoff games are hard to win. They're hard to win. They're hard to win in high school. They're hard to win in the college, and they're hard to win in, in the professionals. This is a hard-fought win. It was against a team. Both teams wanted it. Both teams came out ready to play. A physical, tough battle. But the Panthers were able to get it done with their defense. So I'll give it to the defense. Awesome. Also want to say, man, I'm excited about this Caden Benedict yeah, it's kid, be right? It's going to be a good future for him. So with that in mind, maybe we see you next week. Maybe we don't. But if so, know that we appreciate every one of you guys. And until the next time we see you, go VA all the way. VA all the way. And Justin? Yeah, buddy. I love you, man. Love you, too. Until next time. Happy Thanks Veterans so Day to all happy the veterans, veterans out day. there. Yes, sir. Happy Veterans Day. And happy Veterans Day to you, too, Chris. Thanks, man. Appreciate all it. All right. See you next time. Adios.